the podcast, Malevolent Movies. But something's off, something strange, it's not the movie that's deranged. The cast of characters has changed, or we've impaired our rotten brains. Or it's a bogus mission, and therefore you selected the Collector's Edition. Uh, hey everybody, welcome to Ladies Night here on Malevolent Movies, the podcast. Uh, and as part of the Collector's Edition series of the show, we thought it would be fun to flip the script and have the significant others of the Malevolent Movies crew get together for an episode. Our Malevolent men spend a lot of time huddled away in dark rooms watching and talking about shitty movies, so tonight's our turn to take one of these goddamn things. Uh, <laughs> before we dig in tonight's film, The Slashening, uh, we'll take a moment to introduce ourselves. I'm Cassandra, Ryan's better half. Uh, and I told Tyler tonight that I have some big shoes to fill, but uh, he said I just have a big mouth to fill, so. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> God, damn. Who wants to take it? I am Sarah. I am the significant other of um, Nick, who I believe uh, takes the role of, what is Nick's role usually on the podcast? Just kind of wackadoodle um saying kind of random random stuff nick is usually pretty quiet but then he comes in with a home run every now and again oh see that sounds like a lot of pressure usually it's to bring somebody else (laughs) in the room down so (laughs) okay well i'll keep that in mind but that is who i am uh i'm lisa uh i am the significant other of uh mr tyler am who he's pretty much the jack of all trades on the malevolent main cruise and he likes to scream at Joe Buckley. And then he <laughs> Hi there. I'm Anna Claire. I am Trevor's wife. And I don't know what role Trevor takes up on the podcast, to be totally honest. But if I know my husband, he probably makes a lot of jokes as much as he breathes. Um, <laughs> and he probably does like voices every once in a while. I don't know. So I might do a voice. <laughs> Oh, I cannot wait for that. I'm Maddie. I am Zach's partner, and I also don't know his role fully, but I'm going to guess he's the one who plays devil's advocate and argues a lot more than others. I'm Sarah. I'm Sean's wife. I don't know his role either, but it probably has something to do with always using really flowery talk. (laughs) Tonight's movie is The Slashening. Uh, So here's the synopsis. Uh, Best friends Lucy, Eva, Ashley, Beth, and Margot throw a slumber party, but murder never slumbers. It's a timeless tale of friendships, betrayal, madness, and the search for some decent dick. A 2015 release. The movie starts off uh, with shots of rubber duckies, laundry hanging outside, birdhouses, tidy whities hanging from clotheslines, and an old-school boombox playing a generic rock tale. Uh, we cut to a woman in a polka dot swimming suit uh, wearing green sunglasses, and she's sunbathing in a lawn chair next to a kiddie pool. Super classy. Uh, <laughs> this is Mrs. My Chase. My every day. I <laughs> <laughs> love it. This is Mrs. Chase. Uh, she pulls down her sunglasses and raises her eyebrows. Um, and we cut to the subject of her attention, which is a close-up of a guy's ass and some cut-off jean shorts. Why not? Uh, <laughs> As you do. His, right, right. Uh, you know, just on, on Saturdays. Uh, his name is Jesse, and he's on his knees working in the garden. And as Miss, Mrs. Chase continues to stare, a sleazy guy uh, in an open party shirt with rippling jelly rolls comes around the corner, and he's holding two tropical drinks. Uh, He dances over to Mrs. Chase and hands her a drink and sits down next to her. Uh, And we find that this is her husband, Mr. Chase. And as I like to call them, the cock and the cougar. We will find (laughs) out soon why. (laughs) Um, Mrs. Chase asks Jesse if he would like a drink. Um, He says he should probably just keep working on the weeds. Sorry, that's my cat. I don't know if you guys can hear her. She's super mouthy. (laughs) <laughs> so, so jesse needs to keep working right uh she tells him uh that he should take a break and mr chase agrees uh, mr chase hands jesse his drink telling him uh you know take my seat uh, and he goes to get another drink and uh not before commenting of course on how sweaty jesse is he has large pores uh jesse takes a sip and asks if there's alcohol um And he's reminding Mrs. Chase that he's only 16. And she says, oh, yeah, there's alcohol in it. 
Uh, and she knows he's 16, young, dumb, and full of cum, she replies. Uh, and Jesse says, more like half full. Awkward. Uh, <laughs> we cut to the inside of the house as Mr. Chase watches through the window. He menacingly stabs a knife into the slice of lime and licks it. So we don't know if he's like into it or against it. Yeah. It's super creepy. Um, <laughs> back outside, uh, Mrs. Chase asks Jesse if he has a girlfriend. He nervously says no as Mrs. Chase continues to flirt, touching his thighs and then placing her foot on his crotch. Uh, and he nervously asks her about her husband when Mr. Chase suddenly reappears and he has his hand on Jesse's shoulder. Um, he asks what they're talking about, Mr. Chase, that is. Uh, and Mrs. Chase says she thinks Jesse needs to be with an older woman. Hint, hint, nudge, nudge. Uh, Mr. Chase agrees, running his hands through Jesse's hair. And he says an older woman can teach him all sorts of things. This Mr. Scene. Chase. So cringe. <laughs> God. All of our faces right now are just like, ooh. That's very cool. creepy. That's the literal sound that I was making when I first watched that scene. Oh, I, I did that many times in the movie. Ooh. In a ball, knees to my chest, going. Ooh. Please, please stop! Please don't. So bad. <laughs> yeah, you guys. It you was... guys know no um Bob's Burgers. Anyone watch Bob's Burgers? Yeah. Okay, you yes. know Tina and her awkward. Uh, <laughs> that's like literally what I was doing. It was Great so cuddle. bad. Uh, it's, uh, I just he like oh my god I can look right now. <laughs> <laughs> the glass. I was also half distracted by the beautiful blue eyeshadow. Mm. I mean, oh, come on. that was Lisa. If you could actually a do a makeup tutorial on that, maybe one day. <laughs> oh, I have a comment about makeup later. Don't worry. <laughs> I really enjoyed Halloween costume Malibu Barbie Helena Bonham Carter. Yes, <laughs> I I really enjoyed her. That's a good. Yes. That she, is she a was good the best example. part of this yes. entire exchange. That's a good way to describe that. Goodness gracious, she was <laughs> very she was specific. <laughs> yeah, so starting off the movie with like pedophilia, I, you know, <laughs> I don't know how I was feeling that. I um, felt like I could smell this scene. <laughs> if, that, <laughs> if that makes any sense. It does make sense to me, Lisa. Um, <laughs> and you know what? I, I appreciated the the attempt at, you know, like the humorous, like kiddie pool thing, you know, like going after like the Mrs. Robinson right. type trope. Um, you know, the kiddie pool was like a nice touch, but. Mm -hmm. but you know how you need a pool boy when your pool is a foot deep max. <laughs> right. They wrote the script for a, an in-ground pool. They didn't have the money for it. So they're <laughs> like, okay, let's go to five below, get a kiddie pool. And I the don't budget know. was lacking. We have sorry guys, it's just not in the budget this time around. We have a buck fifty left over after we got this three dollar <laughs> pool. Now we can get you some blue eyeshadow. <laughs> From the same five below, actually. Yeah, exactly. It was five in, below <laughs> is a jack of all trades. It was in those yeah. impulse buys right by the <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> The slashing brought to you by Five Below. They sponsored this movie, actually. I and mean, that's we really... would be so lucky as to be sponsored by Five Below. That's where Tyler <laughs> found it, right? You guys were at five below. Yeah, it was. It like, was oh, in, uh, yeah, this looks great. It was under the bargain bins. It wasn't even. In the <laughs> it was outside the five below. <laughs> yeah. No case. case. It was Dollar just Tree. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> All right, guys. Uh, let's see here. So, so uh, they're they're hitting on hardcore. Uh, Mr. Chase then asks Mrs. Chase if uh, if she's towing Jesse's dick. Uh, Jesse stammers, but then Mr. Chase laughs and tells him that they're just fucking with him. Uh, literally, yeah. Uh, Mr. <laughs> Chase then tells Jesse that uh, if he wants to be with a woman, uh, he has to relax, be cool, confident, and before he knows it, he'll be beg be banging. Excuse me, cheerleaders, homecoming queens. Maybe even older married women. Nudge, 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 nudge. Uh, he's, of course, referring to Mrs. Chase. Mr. Chase continues to preach the gospel of sex with older women, uh, even saying that uh, maybe he can watch, uh, you know, while you, quote, take my wife from behind like a piston in and out, in and out. Yikes. Ugh. Yikes. You're welcome, guys. You're welcome. Collective uh, eye roll. <laughs> <laughs> um, so all the while, uh, still touching all over Jesse's face, his chest, um, 
you know, being a super creep. Uh, Jesse finally stands up when Mr. Chase suggests uh, that he might be putting a finger up Jesse's ass. <laughs> I'm not a sadist. He shows him all four fingers. I won't use oh. my thumb. Uh, <laughs> Jesse tells the couple that he told his mother he'd be home early. Yikes, let's go home. Uh, they, don't, <laughs> they don't have to pay him. And he runs away. Uh, Mrs. Chase is visibly upset uh, that they scared another one away. Uh, Mr. Chase blames himself and his big fat fingers. And Mrs. Chase argues uh, that he has beautiful fingers and he should use them to go get her another cocktail. Uh, (laughs) He leaves to get it. And while he's away, we cut to a point of view shot looking through eye holes from behind a tree. Uh, So like a mask. A little bit of Michael Myers reference there. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, The unknown person in the mask walks up on Mrs. Chase and grabs the boom box, which has been playing our throwback songs. Uh, and which he's I didn't grabbing it. like, by the way, it was actually a pretty good song. <laughs> <laughs> so he's grabbing the boom box with a white gloved hand. Uh, they use the boom box to then smash Mrs. Chase over the head over and over and over. Uh, and Mrs. Chase returns, or I'm sorry, Mr. Chase is returning uh, the cuck. Uh, returns with a margarita and uh and he discovers his dead wife we get a flash of her gruesome face i kind of wish we would have lingered just a little longer being the effects guru here uh it was the fastest shot of my entire life it was so fast absolutely quick and then we didn't even get to see her dead body. Like, come on, guys, no. give me a little more of this. It's because all the time was taken up um, on that artsy shot of the blood on the rubber ducks. Yeah, yes. I think <laughs> yeah, yes. that's what yes. it was. We had I to totally get that in there. You know, the guy filming that was, you know, they had to cut any audio in the area because he's going. <laughs> <laughs> that's when i knew we were watching a prestige yeah. film i was like this is gonna be a good shot. time yeah yeah those bloody ducks <laughs> <laughs> oh god you guys are fabulous we're gonna be fast friends um, <laughs> <laughs> all right so he discovers his wife dead um and then he is in turn stabbed to death and he falls into the kiddie pool um and then we get a, a close-up of that lovely bloody rubber ducky. Mm-hmm. Uh, so yeah. then Jesse comes back, you know, as if magically appearing around the corner and he says, all right, if it's just the pinky finger. <laughs> I that it's just the pinky. I'm not gonna lie, that, yeah. <laughs> that one got an honest laugh out of me. I was Same. so I, exactly. <laughs> I was so weirded out the entire scene. And then he comes back and says, okay, if it's just the pinky, I lost it. I started laughing and I audibly went, damn it. <laughs> Like, I don't I was, want to genuinely laugh at this, yeah, I but so I did. I was so pissed that the movie made me laugh. I, like, I had a few moments like that. Me too. I, I'm sad to say. Me yeah, too. I agree. <laughs> when my yes. say it was a real Joe Buckley of a movie. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you don't want to laugh, just keep you throwing to. jokes out there, something's going to be funny at some something point. Something will stick. Yeah. Right. Something's right. going to stick. And when it does, you're pissed. <laughs> How did you guys feel about the acting in this first segment? Porn. I, yeah, porn. <laughs> I agree. Uh, usually all the Stigler, they really they were the there acting. to do a job, but they're not there to be too serious. Porn. Well, you, know? you know, and I feel like it, of course, it's over the top to make it more campy and fun, I guess. Yeah. But it was just very bad solid over the top bad act yeah <laughs> yeah well, and like when we get like further into the movie i was thinking back to this and i'm like why <laughs> <laughs> like what I, I, like honest to god what was the point like if it's just for a bit it's a bit yeah. that's fine i get it it had no How connection to the rest in? of the movie. I don't know. It wasn't until you I know? like watched it back to like make my notes for our recording today. <laughs> yeah. Um, that I was like, oh, I, th- I think I know what they were trying to do Same. here. But yeah, the still, second it's time not through, clear like, enough that I I'm like, oh, I, know I what's understand up. what's happening. Yeah. I'm just right. like, this guy wants to put his finger in a kid's ass. Like, what? <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thanks. Uh to each their own but keyword there is kid yeah he did not like, look 16 i'm sorry no, no. And can we get tina belcher in here uh, yeah <laughs> not good oh shit all right so let's see here so just the pinkies okay by jesse 
Uh, <laughs> he, he's, he stops in his tracks. Uh, he sees the bodies of Mr. and Mrs. Chase, the cock and the cougar. Um, and then his throat is cut. Uh, and there's blood that splashes all over the screen. And we get the title card, the slashing. I love how matter of fact you said that you're like, yeah, he's standing there. His throat gets cut. And yeah. he's slashing. Am I the only one though, when they, when he gets his, his throat cut like it it seemed a little light like it seemed oh my god like, it was awful it was terrible like they were like oh probably it's okay like, the, at first I, I can't tell i'm looking at it now it looks like a marker effect yes. on his neck yes. not like someone drew on his neck like there's an effect put over his neck like to really that. translucent no whatsoever red eyeshadow like practical effect to it <laughs> I feel like they were it's just like, like, hey, it's okay. They we'll, got we'll so just cover much eyeshadow at five below, you guys. So <laughs> y'all ain't got budget red. went towards. Y'all missed the red eyeshadow at five below. <laughs> yeah, y'all are making a horror movie. What are you thinking? <laughs> Get your head got in the game. Pool, blue eyeshadow and red eyeshadow. What else do you need for a horror movie? Nothing. Terrible acting. <laughs> also found at the five below. Yeah. Out of blue boxes, weird pants, Walkman, T name that. Right, right. <laughs> Is it yellow patent leather high heels too? Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh yeah. Those high heels Those are great. Oh my god. Those are great. <laughs> <laughs> right in the crotch of our 16-year-old. Ooh. All right. <laughs> Just play All that right, sound guys. effect on repeat. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, shit. Our opening credits, uh, they're 80s inspired. Uh, We've got some uh, 80s score playing over random shots of tools, panties, remnants of party beer cans, pizza boxes, uh, trays of cocaine. That's a party. uh, And pills. Uh, Thermostat sex uh, set. (laughs) Sex. Sorry, guys. Thermostat stat set at 69. Uh, Oh, well. uh, uh, (laughs) Yeah. nudge uh and we've got saws and splatters of blood um and then when the credits end we cut to the inside of a moving car um and two girls sit in the car um they're just uh, one of them is scrolling through pictures of herself and a guy through her phone reminiscing you know uh we find her name is lucy and she's riding with her friend margo um Margo's talking about her excitement for the night's events. Um, they're going to get to see their friends. Um, and then she tells Lucy she has to stop obsessing over her boyfriend. His name is Brett. Um, and actually, I believe he was her ex-boyfriend at this time. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Lucy and Margo uh, then agree that he was a jerk off and she needs uh, all she needs is a fun night uh, with the girls. And with that, we get a long sequence of Lucy and Margot singing to different breakup songs. Uh, one of which felt like a nod to Taylor Swift, that first song. Anybody? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Never getting back together, mm-hmm. maybe. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, Ryan felt, and he included this for me, uh, that there was a nod to Alanis Morissette. Uh, the Canadian Jan Love Hurts A. I uh, was thinking was Avril Lavigne. Avril Lavigne. Okay, That's no, yes, that makes more sense to one. me. Yes, yes, definitely. I had a big, like, Garfunkel and Oates yes. kind of vibe with them. Mm. And that's, I, at first I th- kept thinking, I'm like, oh, is this a Garfunkel and Oates song? Like, cause it just yes, sounded I remember so thinking like that too. too. <laughs> I remember thinking that too. And I, like, and then I was, like, I was so convinced, obviously I didn't want to look anything up yet, but it was just like, was was that them actually singing those songs? I was just so convinced because the way they were even harmonizing in the car, I was like, mm-hmm. wait a minute. One of them totally sings this song, you know, and you're going to find out after the fact, you know, <laughs> whether it was them or not. But yeah, absolutely. The whole time, like, I, I know most of their songs. Hold on. I think this was genuinely my favorite part of the entire movie was the the car scene with the two girls. Like, mm-hmm. it was just so good. It was so pure. Like it was bad. That looked like me and Trevor's sister in the car. Like <laughs> it was great. It was very like realistic. It was nice. However, there is one thing that I want to call attention to that bugged me throughout the entire movie. Oh. And it starts here. <laughs> that they were circling around the same neighborhood for hours. Yes. yes. Not even yes. that. Really? I oh. noticed that. I noticed that. Margot's lenses 
disappear and reappear yes. in her glasses oh. so frequently and it pissed me off the whole that. time i didn't even all i could look that. at was her glare it was horrible i, oh, I know that out when we and were watching gone. it too i was like wait a minute where's their lenses she doesn't need yeah. her prescription anymore oh yeah, my right? god it's true <laughs> i'm looking at it right now it's horrible <gasps> what oh my I god i wanted to scream <laughs> that is awful interesting that is yeah i totally awful miss that and beautiful i love that <laughs> wanted to rip my skin off it was horrible <laughs> <laughs> so after our montage of all of the terrible breakup songs uh we cut to a driveway at a house um and lucy and margo are walking up to a door and they're greeted by a character named eva um who i keep trying to call eva but I'm trying not to pull a Joe Buckley. I was told I would be oh, shunned. And made I, <laughs> yes, you would. I would give you such shit. Oh, my God. Okay. So, Eva, uh, they all <laughs> get their hugs in. Uh, Eva tells, uh, tells them that Ashley and Beth just got there. Um, and at that moment, we're introduced to both Ashley and Beth. Um, Ashley asks Lucy if she's okay. You know, men suck. That's why she has five at the same time. Uh, <laughs> and Beth hugs Lucy and says she just got out of her shortest stint in rehab yet. So solid friends, good choices. Um, let's see. Lucy thanks Eva. Eva, damn it. Okay, you guys are gonna have to make fun of me. I fucked up. Uh, <laughs> can we get a counter? <laughs> we get a counter of how many times it's Eva versus Eva. Yes. Ding. Yes. It's like a very counters. Tyler Am thing to do. <laughs> fucking Tyler Am <laughs> fucking counters. They make me laugh every time. Every time. Uh, can we get a, so Lucy- Can you edit in a fart noise every time she says Eva? <laughs> <laughs> All right, yeah. guys. Okay, he All says right. yes. <laughs> We're officially friends now. Thank you for that. Uh, so. That or a, or a barf. So we'll usually get either a... Or a bleh. <laughs> Just, just cut it right from this video. Just, just get her noises because they're perfect. <laughs> Turn me into a soundboard. <laughs> um, so Lucy thanks Eva for having them. Um, Eva tells them that her parents are gone all week, and you know, so they're gonna have this girls' night. Um, and then they're interrupted by a knock at the door. Uh, Eva answers it. Of course, it's her house. Why not? Uh, and we're introduced to the neighbors, the Kingsleys. Uh, they said they just moved in last month and um, Eva tells them she's been away at school and, you know, this is why this is the first time she's meeting them. Uh, the Kingsleys say that, you know, her parents, Eva's parents, have told them all about her. Uh, they also make a lot of uh, points here to tell Eva, Eva, <laughs> damn it, <laughs> fuck this, fuck you guys, fuck this, fuck all of it. <laughs> Uh, Cassandra has left the chat. <laughs> I quit. I fucking quit. It didn't take me long. Uh, <laughs> they make it a point to tell Eva how great uh, and quiet uh, her parents are. Uh, the Kingsleys notice that it looks like they're having a party, um, which can get pretty loud. And Eva assures them it's a get together, not a party. Uh, and so, of course, the Kingsleys are like, well, get togethers can get loud, too. Um, and then they mentioned the chases, uh, our cock and cougar. Uh, remember the get together that they had, and there are a couple from the beginning of the movie. Uh, and Mrs. Kingley, Kingsley says she's allergic to loud noises. Uh, she has very sensitive ears, and she has trouble going into dreamland. Um, so Eva, of course, promises it'll be really quiet. It's just a quiet get together. And then we cut to Beth, who's snorting a huge <laughs> line of coke, and says, "Oh fuck yeah! Was that too loud?" I got to say, I loved Beth. <laughs> that, it was, she's yeah. my favorite. At first, she's I was like, favorite. oh boy. But the second she did that, I was like, all right, I'm in. You're in. <laughs> <laughs> well, she goes right back to her cocaine, uh, but this time quieter. Uh, and of course, the Kingsleys then leave. And as they walk away, we cut to another point of view shot uh, from behind a tree. We're creepily watching them leave. Did and anyone comes- notice that as they're walking away in, in that shot where the person's creeping on them, uh, the guy like turns and looks at his foot like he like he sp- stepped in dog shit or something? Did How anyone else notice that? that? Oh, I did <laughs> not like, notice that. Just yeah. before they cut away from that to the next scene, <laughs> he, they're walking down, you see them in their khakis walking to their house, 
and he turns around like looks at the bottom of his foot like he steps in dog shit. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> okay, that, I don't know if that was planned, but that was awesome. If they <laughs> got the tiniest bit of comeuppance by stepping in dog shit immediately. I have to go back and watch it now because awesome. that's hilarious. Because I immediately did not like them because I, I'll tell you, I went to a private school for high school and everyone's parents were those people oh, God. so i have met so many of those that as soon as they came on screen i knew who they were gonna be i knew <laughs> that they were gonna act exactly like they did just now i knew they nick, were gonna be awful nick referred to them as goober and gums so if you hear me saying goober and gums later goober it's and refreshing. gums okay <laughs> and the first people? couple was um what were they cuckold and yeah, cougar. And cougar. This is cougar. Goober and Gums. Goober yeah. and Gums. I'm like the alliteration. So, acting wise, I liked them the most. <laughs> Just like you like them the most over the top. I like acting wise, not yes. per- personality wise. But I she enjoyed was them over the top. I was into that. Yeah, I, I, honestly, I think that the main cast did a pretty good job with the acting as a mm-hmm. whole, other than like the uh, cougar and cuckold at the beginning. Um, and usually with like all these like shitty movies, I'm like, oh, their acting is and, like I'm a stickler <laughs> for it. But like, it wasn't that it wasn't that bad. I agree. Right. Well, uh, so we watched them leave. Um, we cut to an exterior shot of the house and it's time lapsed. Uh, so we go from day to night. And I believe that's where we're kicking off our very quiet get together. Mm-hmm. And that, uh, that's where my part comes in. So uh, you started that off perfectly for me. We Nighttime falls. And uh, while our get togethers host, uh, Eva, Eva <laughs> uh, orders two large pizzas, um, Ashley. <laughs> is holding court on the couch and she's explaining her philosophies uh, about uh, a, a successful three-way. And uh, she she's giving advice to the girls, things like, um, let the guys think you've never done this before, let them think they're the first, uh, and don't do it with two brothers because when their dicks touch, they tend to freak <laughs> out. Which, oh, just through that whole thing, uh, oh, again. These are I was the things so... that women talk about, guys. These are the things that women talk about, right? Right. As right. as Nick has very uh, openly said in malevolent movies and the podcast and the videos, he's multiple times said, "It's just what girls do." It's just what <laughs> girls do. Um, <laughs> Lord. Uh, okay, so once Ashley finished discussing her sex capades. Uh, attention turns to Beth, who has a tray of fresh powder ready to be snorted. <laughs> um, and okay, sp- speaking of powder, the the lighting in this this scene made it so perfect for me to see. Uh, did anyone else notice just the harsh, harsh makeup on all of these girls? Yes. Yes, uh, I yes. wanted to. Ashley, especially, it oh. was very upsetting. <sighs> Listeners, like, remember that this is ladies' pretty. night. <laughs> We're going to be talking about <laughs> makeup for a quick sec. But like that—that that was one of my big gripes. Was like all of these women are very like pretty women. Mm-hmm. They deserved uh, more. Why yeah. did they do this to them? They deserved less, really. Also, <laughs> they less, that much less is more. Yeah. Margot's hair irked me the entire time, the way it was styled. I even asked Trevor, I was like, what? Who, did her, who did her who did her hair like that? The way that her hair is parted, it's oh. like it creates such a big negative space on the side of her face. And it's just mm. like it's what it's it just stuck out the entire time. <laughs> I'm like, why didn't somebody say, Hey, hey, let's just yeah. let's just make it even. It let's like just every- even it out. Everything will be fine. I'm looking yeah. at the scene now. It looks like so for for people who don't know when uh when women contour their faces they're doing mm-hmm. the low lights and the highlights of their faces so when they want something to appear smaller they put on a contour or a bronzer when they want something to appear larger or highlighted that would be with a light powder and your concealer what they do is called baking, and it's to set the concealer so nothing moves, and you can keep that powder on for a bit while you continue your makeup. 
Whoever did their makeup did not take the powder off because it is still there. <laughs> Through the They're r- still baking, honey. They, they look like some some fresh donuts in this movie because good <laughs> lord, there's so much powder on their face. It is well, in that contour line, it was the same on every face. And you I know. feel like hmm. someone brought in their makeup and was like, you everyone can just use this. And it's the same yeah. color, but it's on all these different oh, yeah. ladies. It's an orange, like bronzy color. It's it so bad. I didn't notice any of this. <laughs> <laughs> this is all news to me. I'm like, oh, they were wearing makeup. Oh, it was bad makeup. Oh, oh man. <laughs> I mean, I noticed it on Beth even when she was first introduced. I noticed the white powder on her face, and I was like, okay, it's probably just, you know, bad lighting. But then when we got into this scene, and it's on everyone. It was well on Eva oh. too, because I literally remember asking like. I turned to Nick and I was like, is that a teenager? Is that a parent? Like, I don't. It ages them. There's something about, like, yeah. the under eyeliner, something like that. They, they didn't have to do all that to them. Yeah. When you bake, it just, like, it brings out all the hard lines and the creases and the oh, pores. Yeah. And it's, oh, God. It's- I'm learning so much right now. Yeah. <laughs> That's what we're here for. <laughs> um, Ladies' our- night is educational. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Always. Yeah, as someone who, you know, doesn't know makeup this is very helpful well there you go <laughs> do you have any other makeup questions maddie <laughs> no no can't say i've ever That's had okay. we'll take you to five questions. below and we'll get you your starter kit of makeup don't <laughs> <worry>. <laughs> sounds good it'd be the first step so the last place you should be going for makeup <laughs> um okay so um all right, so yeah, the the attention turns to Beth, and uh, Lucy asks Beth uh, how her latest stint in rehab went. And um, when Beth replies that it went well, and she's ha- but she's happy to be out, uh, Margot is very confused and asks her, "Isn't uh, the point of rehab to get better and stop using drugs?" All while Beth is lining up, she's getting ready to do some rails. <laughs> Um, (laughs) and Beth says that the actual point of rehab is to rest up, get in shape, and then go on a fucking bender, (laughs) which again, I laughed and I was like, God fucking damn it. Really? (laughs) Um, when Eva, Eva reminds the girls (laughs) not to get One of you guys is going to fuck up. It's not just me. I can feel it. (laughs) Um, when Eva reminds the girls uh, not to get too crazy because her parents already warned them uh, or because her parents are gone and the neighbors have already made it there. Um, Ashley comes up with um, one of the cli- the most cliched lines. And I, I groaned when I heard her say, nothing bad's going to happen. <laughs> as soon as she said that. Boom. Eye roll of the century. Um, and of course, as soon as she says that, there's a knock at the door. Um, uh, a uh, at the door is a police officer who I lovingly named um Officer Jazz FM because he's got a <laughs> sultry voice. Um, Nick described it as silky, silky. <laughs> it's a very silky voice. That yeah, that that works. I agree. Um, so officer jazz FM enters the living room, uh, where the girls <laughs> put down their beers and Beth just holds her hands hovering over her tray. <laughs> okay. That was the best. I was dying. That was amazing. Um, he t- and he doesn't no even one, try no, to like hide it. Just, she just hovers her hands, hands over. over it and hands no one, yeah. No one notices or says anything about it. No one acknowledges it. It's amazing. And she stays like that through the rest of the time he's there. Um, (laughs) Beautiful. It was so funny. (laughs) Trevor was not watching. So Trevor and I watched it together the first time. And he was not paying attention at that point. And I was like, oh, my God, Trevor, please, when they go back to a wide shot, look at uh, Beth. I did not know her name at the time. Yeah. I said, look at Drug's friend. And I felt really bad about saying that after the fact. <laughs> yeah, I didn't notice that she was doing that until like the third time that they cut back to them. I was like, wait a minute. Has she been like that the whole time? <laughs> Once again, prestige filmmaking. <laughs> so yes. great. It was so I thought about, great. I was like, this dude's a cop. What What about the cocaine? Like, And it was about the third shot when I was like, oh, fuck, that's hilarious. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> she did it well enough that it wasn't like over the top and dramatic that we're like, oh, ha ha, covering <laughs> the cocaine with your hands. You don't notice it until you're no. like, well, wait a minute, there are drugs there. Hold on. 
It was amazing. <laughs> um, okay, so then the officer uh, tells the girl that there is a violent, the girls, I should say, that there is a violent murderer on the loose who's already killed three people only a few blocks away. And to be safe, uh, they need to stay inside because a curfew has been mandated. Um, at that point, uh, Officer Jazz FM starts to get real creepy. And uh, as they always do, it was Mm -hmm. amazing. Again, we're talking about performances in this movie. He was one of my favorites because he knew it wasn't serious. He knew what kind of project they were doing. And he's like, all right, I'm going to have some fucking fun with this. So he got weird (laughs) and he made shit weird. And I loved every second of it. Um, He asks the girls if they're all alone no boys around all by yourselves <laughs> and they're like yeah do you have any uh, weapons or ways of protecting yourself uh no are you trained in any way like he was getting fucking creep into it it was amazing <laughs> asking if they have any training or uh how do you work as a team? Once he said that, I was like, what? <laughs> as a cohesive hell? unit. As a cohesive <laughs> unit. And then he starts like crouching and sizing them up. I was like, oh shit, this this took a turn fast. I thought the movie was like gonna be about these girls being hostage the rest of the time. I was I was like, all right, we're getting into the meat of it like early, but <laughs> dang. All right. Um, yeah, not to not to get ahead of ourselves. Um I lost my place. Oh, okay. Uh, He poses the hypothetical question of, yeah, if the girls could take him in a fight. And uh, yeah, it makes us think he's going to attack them, but it doesn't happen. And it's the moment he leaves, which is, mind you, very slowly while looking over his shoulder like the entire time, uh, we immediately cut to the girls saying, let's go get in our PJs. And they all go, yeah. And then go upstairs. <laughs> and I wanted to. It's what barf. women do. It's just it's what girls just do. What girls do. What girls do. It's just what they do. Massive eye rolls. rolls. Officer, I forgot what you called him. I almost called him Jazzercise. That's not right. That, I'll take it. <laughs> he started like doing it. some squats. I'll take it, Officer Jazzercise. Officer Jazzercise. Did anybody else get a little weirded out? His lips were the reddest lips I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> Cherry red. They were so distracting. Like, did somebody put? lipstick on this guy to make him seem no, weird if he had but lipstick on he would have also had powder on his face that's <laughs> true <laughs> the very 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 red lips. i think that's and a all contour him. line <laughs> I, was I will some... say i was very i regretfully admit that i thought officer jazz fm was a little beefy <laughs> a little cute <laughs> when they, like when... like good beefy Oh, good like, beefy. yeah like when he first came on screen i was like trevor his shirt is so tight oh my god <laughs> like he was poured into the shirt and i was here for it Lisa's yeah i was like this is, this is this was made for the female gaze <laughs> the shirt was struggling on him the shirt was definitely oh, struggling really on him <laughs> and so was i i get it <laughs> i was ready for someone to start choking on a button i was ready for that thing to pop <laughs> I was like, this is great. The only <laughs> the only negative that I had about Officer Beefcake is the pedophilia. <laughs> oh. Well, <laughs> well, yes. However, uh his hair in this scene in particular was just sad. They brushed it back and they should have let it go. We see him later in the movie uh at another point and his hair looks so nice and it's like not brushed or anything. I don't think I even noticed. noticed. And I'm <laughs> sad. <laughs> I was Dang. I was personally offended by their choice of hairstyling on Do him. Do you feel personally victimized by Officer Beefcake? <laughs> <laughs> Opportunity missed. I, I'm not gonna say what I thought. I said <laughs> I wouldn't mind being victimized by Officer Beefcake. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, that takes us ladies about 50 years back, doesn't it? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Listen, I'm not proud of the fact that I thought it. I'm Stop less there. proud of the fact that I said it, but I feel safe enough among you. Yeah, I was okay. going to say, Anna Claire, don't. We're not judging. I'm not this judging. A safe space. <laughs> it's a safe space. It's okay. 
there are worse choices. <laughs> <laughs> there are worse choices. There there could have been uh the the cock, the cuck hold. Uh-huh. Okay. No. Would you rather okay, go with like beefy cop or like cutie progressive nerdy guy at the end? Fuck Mary Kill. Uh, cuck hold, <laughs> gums, and officer beefcake. <laughs> okay. I'm into That's it. That's a natural progression. <laughs> it makes sense. Oh, God. Oh, my God. Anyway. <laughs> kill, kill, kill. Thanks. <laughs> Lord. Okay. Any who diddle. Um. <laughs> So the girls all do their little yay, and then they go upstairs, and they start, uh, Jesus, it's another one of those, a guy wrote this kind of thing. Oh, yeah. Where I mean, um, it's inevitable. Where, it's like changing yeah. scene, so check, bad. we know that that's coming, it's lesbian so kissing scene, we know that that's coming, it's right. like... So it's just it's a matter of when. <laughs> so the girls are all in a circle and they're standing in their bras and underwear as as we do. In a circle. As, as we do. <laughs> in a, I mean, in a geometric are. circle, all staring at each other. In a circle, just staring at each other, and they're like <laughs> I, holding on to the hooks on their bras. Their <laughs> yeah. It's what girls do. I'm like, that's how that's how we that's how we change. We change in a group. We have to stand in a circle to summon the the sisterhood that came before us and facing um, each other. I, I, I gotta say, I actually feel a little overdressed for this podcast. You know, right? even though <laughs> don't give them ideas. <laughs> I just love the fact that they're all holding it. Like it, once you go, I'll go. Me. You have to do it at the same time, or it's not a bonding experience. Well, but mind you, that while they're all doing that. There's a creeper in the window staring at them because, ooh, they think they're going to see some boobies. <laughs> it would be weird if there wasn't a creeper in the window. Yeah, and there's just no reason for this entire scene. I mean, there really isn't. But anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, with with the creeper in the window, the girls don't know it, but they're kind of playing a game of will they, won't they when it comes to taking off their bras. And... As they're doing all this, they're talking about, uh, what's her name, Lucy? Lucy's uh, ex-boyfriend and how he started getting really weird. And he started getting uh, really creepy. And uh, he would get really angry all of a sudden. He would, like, uh, what'd she say? Like, he'd snap into fits of rage or something like that? Something about staring at her? Yeah, he would stare at her all the time, which is, you know... (laughs) The, with this movie so far, they're setting up. They've got this this really creepy officer. Now we're learning all this really creepy stuff about the ex boyfriend. Ooh, mm. are are they are they gonna be the creepy murderer they've been told about? Who's who's it gonna don't be? Know. We don't know. We got a couple <laughs> of suspects so far. And uh, so while they're all talking about all this, oh by the way, um. Apparently, her ex-boyfriend's uh, dick often smelled of different vagina, <laughs> as I Let like me to call smell it. Smell your dick. Vagina. <laughs> <laughs> Who started singing that? That was, <laughs> that was me. And you're welcome. <laughs> I quit. <laughs> what a strange plot point to include. <laughs> like, what a what a very strange thing to specifically yeah, call but we're out. Go- we're gonna hear about it later, though. Which that's you, what we talk about as women. That though, was right? the last thing you think <laughs> in this do. movie you're gonna hear about again. But <laughs> you're gonna hear about it again. Um, <laughs> so just as they finish talking about this, uh, they decide, okay, let's actually get changed and take off our bras. But just before <laughs> they do, Margot says, "Well, we should close the blinds." Gosh. Darn it. <laughs> Our creeper's not going to see no boobies. And while Dang those it. blinds are closed, guys, furthermore. Nick said, I am so glad they closed those curtains. <laughs> I'm yeah, so but then, glad. But then from behind those curtains, he's not seeing nothing, but he can hear them whisp- like saying things like, wow, your vagina's really cute. They're saying really <laughs> nice things and complimenting each other's little... Because that's yeah. hours. Yes, totally thank you, Tyler. Normal. It was <laughs> that, oh, that creeper must have been so frustrated. 
Oh, darn. Oh, man. It's going to be really hard time for him. Ha-ha. <laughs> 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 Penis. <laughs> Penises get hard. <laughs> I did really enjoy that they were very uplifting with each other. Like, man, your boobs look great. It's like, yeah, right? that's the kind of relationship I want. <laughs> Empowerment. <laughs> yeah, none, like fucking but dude. You'll notice when they're saying those compliments and stuff, none of the girls are like, no, I don't look good. No, they're all just like, thank you. They're all taking those compliments. <laughs> Except the compliments. Yeah. They're like, yeah, I do look good. Yeah, my <laughs> vagina looks awesome. It's huge. <laughs> it's so big. <laughs> Everyone loves it. I have a big labia and I'm proud of it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you and good night. <laughs> the end. Cut the cameras. Oh my gosh. Okay, so <laughs> So once the blinds are closed and we stop hearing all the vagina compliments. Oh my gosh. Um uh we start we we cut to outside where I couldn't figure out what this actually was but you start hearing like metal clanging like like banging sounds outside and I could never figure out what that was exactly but it cuts that sound connects us to the next scene where you can still hear it outside from where the girls are and um all the girls are telling uh the ends of scary stories. You don't hear the actual scary stories. You just keep hearing the end lines of all of their different stories. Ashley's scary story is definitely the one to um, keep your attention, make you actually listen to what she was saying because uh, her the end of her story is terrifying because it ends with a uh, circumcision or a non-circumcised penis, I should say. <laughs> she literally says, and that's what I found out. <laughs> he wasn't circumcised. <laughs> You're like, well, that was I, perfect. I'm sorry. What was that? Thank you. <laughs> Which will come back later. Thank you. I dropped out of college for theater. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, so after Ashley's scary story, which was very hard for her to tell, uh, um, <laughs> Beth starts to tell her story. Um, about a guy named Rusty Joe, and uh, as she does so, every third or fourth sentence uh, is interrupted by a deep, deep snort of her of her cocaine, which was <laughs> I loved it. I Did thought you know? I thought they were gonna do like the the comedic um, what's it called rule of three, where just the three times. No, she keeps going with it every single time. And every snort was more beautiful than the next. The girl um, should be dead with the she amount really of drugs she just in this night. She, she should, should not exist. It is insane. She's spending a fortune on drugs. <laughs> She's got money. You know it. <laughs> um. So she keeps. Uh. She. Uh. As she gets further into her story about this hobo who gives toothless blowjobs to married men. <laughs> <laughs> she reveals that uh, Rusty Joe murdered the men who had wronged him out of a deal. And Margot interjects with uh, the fact that if you, some say, if you look in the mirror and say Rusty Joe three times, and in parentheses, if your father has had a homosexual affair, uh, <laughs> that he'll come alive and kill you. And uh, Eva, I couldn't, I, I, I you can tell that she's freaked out, but she wants to play the brave card. So she says that she doesn't believe any of it. It's just not true. And that pisses Beth off. She says, you say I'm a fucking liar? Like, she is <laughs> pissed. And uh, it just sends her off into a mini coke rage. It was amazing. Uh, Beth tells the girls that uh, she knew about a girl who... Uh, looked into the <laughs> mirror and... Uh, says Rusty Joe that's Lisa <laughs> snorting coke by the way <laughs> listeners Rusty Joe <laughs> the dulcet tones <laughs> Rusty fucking Joe <laughs> and then as soon as she gets to, to that heightened point of yelling Rusty fucking Joe she starts to just completely lose track of her story which ends with um, someone being uh, welcomed to the quote-unquote AIDS family. 
which had me in shock. And mm-hmm. uh, it ends with her saying, and uh, that's why I always make dudes wear a rubber when they're fucking me. <laughs> Fuck, this is good coke. <laughs> I just is, can't with this movie. So, and beautiful, beautiful Beth ends my section. <laughs> <laughs> I say next Halloween, we all dress up. <laughs> oh, my God. Bad. I want to be a bloody rubber duck. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be Margo, and I'll make sure to part my hair right here. Oh, yes. God. That's not far and off. I'll be the dumb pizza boys. <laughs> oh, Jesus. We haven't gotten <laughs> All of them. <laughs> Speaking of Margo being done dirty, like, Everyone else is in these cute little PJs. And she's got Oof. this old ass nightgown. It's a fucking moo moo. I said, why did they put her in a moo moo? Why did they put her? <laughs> I was, her? I was using her glasses. She has to be the like, frumpy one. Right. She's comfortable, sure. But also, why? <laughs> she's the quirky friend. Yeah. She's the quirky friend who wears old lady she's quirky nightgowns with bangs and glasses and um her thigh high socks you know she's She's gotta wear something from victorian england halfway through this movie i got to a point where i was like the make two girls lucy margo they kind of look like great value daphne and velma yes 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 yes. i can see that yeah like the off, also ref- off, off Great. brand of Scooby Doo, or maybe the porno version at this point. I'm not sure, oh. but they definitely yeah. seemed like that. God, <laughs> I kept calling Margot the Lena Dunham friend because mm-hmm. that felt like what they were trying to go for <gasps> with her like styling. I was like, oh, they're doing Lena Dunham. Okay, cool. Oh Great. my god, thanks. Uh, <laughs> I could see that. I looked her up, this actress who plays Margot, because I was like, I know her from something. That is, she was giving me Lena Dunham vibes. That's what the I was The entire thinking. time. Holy. <laughs> All right, I'm going to be able to sleep tonight. Awesome. <laughs> That's what I'm here for. Thank you. All right. Uh, brings me to my section. Just so you know, I'm not very good at watching movies and retaining information. So I've got <laughs> Same. it out in front of me. Also, I couldn't remember their names. So they all have nicknames at some point. And as you guys were talking, I... I wrote down all the names in parentheses <laughs> with my nicknames. <laughs> you're taking notes. I like that organization strategy. Or I should say you're, oh, what's it? Annotating. You're annotating your own notes. That's so cute. Yeah, because I've got Daphne and Belmont. I've got cocaine, owns the house, whore, <laughs> you know. Yeah, just the <laughs> standard. Right. Straight to the point. Uh, Don't mince right. words. So, oh my God. in the previous scene, a uh, lady who owns a house whose name is Eva, thanks guys. Uh, <laughs> Damn, all of Eva, you. Eva. All of you. Eva. You like very much like Wally. Just yes. Eva. Um, Eva had ordered some pizza. So my scene opens with uh, Pete's door slamming shut. And you see this pizza boy strutting up to the door. By the way, pizza logo kind of looks like Mr. Potato Head with a really big nose and like if he got smushed flat. <laughs> That's how my brain works. Sorry, this whole section is going to be like that. <laughs> um, it as so it should be. Uh, ch- ch- pizza guy has some completely rad pants. Reminds me of some sort of skating rink in the 90s, just transferred onto some sort of MC Hammer pants. Um, starts to walk to the door, gets stabbed, stab, stab, drops his pizzas. Perfect pile. A plus for your effort there, <laughs> pizza man. Um, and then unfortunately bleeds all over the pizza. Well, Inside. he bleeds in a, a small line over the pizza. There, <laughs> I loved that. I they did. literally like a squirted a moment. bottle of like sriracha or yes, something yes. over the pizza <laughs> box. Cassandra, how did the blood effects make you feel? Oh man. So the opening scenes, I really liked the color and like the thickness, the consistency. The, the, again, guys, I'm not a weirdo. I swear this is coming from an effects artist. But, but then like, as we kind of go through it, it looks kind of translucent, translucent. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Did anybody notice that? And no, mm-hmm. just me. It okay, seemed cool. to degrade the entire time. Yeah, like okay. it just looked worse and worse as we went on. Yeah. Like the only thing that seemed consistently good was the line of blood on the pizza box. No, I loved that. <laughs> it was, it was great. just so <laughs> perfectly, pretentiously artsy. <laughs> just, I don't know. Beautiful. <laughs> They started with high dollar blood and ended with five and below blood. There we go. <laughs> Last year's clearance. 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Inside the house, women don't hear anything going on. You actually get a shot of Eva calling and being like, hello, uh, pizza, not here yet. Making a real big deal out of it. She was very aggressive on the phone. Um, and, you know, they're going to bring her a new pizza. They don't know where the guy went. You know, apparently he's unreliable because the pizza parlor doesn't seem to care that they're missing an employee. <laughs> Um, we get a POV shot as a hand approaches one of the girls and grabs her shoulder and blah, just a couple of fellas who I nicknamed Jock Boy and Polo, whose name <laughs> I now know. Jock Boy <laughs> is Billy and Polo is Pat, which was close enough for me. Um, <laughs> Pat, I'm so bad at reading, guys. <laughs> You're doing great. Um. Pat's super kind of uncomfortable and nerdy type. You know, he's got the glasses. He's kind of shying away as Billy immediately goes in and starts to make out with the closest thing near him. Um, And Pat decides to shoot his shot uh, with Lucy, who has recently been broken up with. And this this level of flirting, I've never seen a man move his eyebrows so much in my life. Just (laughs) constantly up and down like, hey, 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 how you do it? It's because he's awkward. He gotta move his eyebrows. He doesn't know what to do. He's trying. Um, so the guys decide, and so does Ashley, who has gotten around a little bit in her day, no. um, decide that yeah, it's not a party without boys and more cocaine and more drinking. So then we get a very traditional B-rated movie like <laughs> drinking scene party um, montage <laughs> we're, we're gonna play some drinking games which they announced we're gonna play drinking games and the first thing that happens is ashley just holds up a glass and goes drink which i assume is the first game you just drink it's my favorite um, game followed by you know cinematic pans of you know flippy cup and doing all that stuff then once again not a game but shotgun um also not a game. The Coke girl is really bad at doing shotgun. Mm-hmm. Spilled half of it all over herself. <laughs> but instead of doing keg stands, we don't have a keg. We're just going to do Coke stands. Just doing lines of Coke while on a headstand. That was amazing. Um, some sort of, I labeled it as turkey beer goblin game. The whole front half of the beer can is just fully engulfed in your mouth. And you <laughs> bob your head like a chicken to get it down your throat. I'm not awful. exactly sure what exactly. I felt like um, I couldn't breathe during that moment. <laughs> <laughs> like he's doing that, like, and I was like, "Ow, my throat hurts watching this." How are you? Understand. Why? How, stop! <laughs> like it was so bad. Yeah. So, um, for anyone who watches this movie and decides, "Hey, this sounds like a fun game," but it doesn't have a name, it's now officially called Turkey Beer Gobble. <laughs> Beautiful. I love it. Got it. Happy Thanksgiving. <laughs> <laughs> Um, Jack boy, Billy, for some reason, looks at a painting like he's high, but he's drunk. He looks at it very intensely, like it's moving. Don't understand what they were going for there. Um, and then they decide to do the traditional, what is it, William Tell, apple on the head, going to throw a dart at it. Um, and for a second there, I thought they killed Pat because the dart <laughs> hits him in the head and you just see him laying on the ground. Um, yeah, I kind of thought that too. I instantly thought, here's our first step. Mm-hmm. Okay. The first thing I <laughs> noticed with this, because I I'm just I'm weird, but the first thing I noticed was that the apple wasn't like on the top of his head, which I'm guessing was he's got a strangely shaped head and they could not get it to sit like that. But he's got his head like tilted to the side. He's kind of like tilted to the side while the apple is balancing on his on his head, but it's like He's, it's just weird. They make him stand in like the weirdest position to have an apple actually balance on his head. They had to find a flat spot in order to get this apple to stay. <laughs> That's what happens after you play turkey beer gobble. I guess. I don't know why, why it would affect Pat, but all right. <laughs> I was just assuming they were all doing it. Um, anyway, thought he was dead. Nope, not dead, just wounded. You now see him later on with a ginormous piece of gauze <laughs> for the smallest 
I'm assuming small as dart hole because darts aren't very big. And unless this thing went fully into his skull, this is unnecessary. (laughs) Also poor makeup department trying to tape this on. One is directly over his eyebrow. One is on his hairline. There's no way this was staying on throughout the movie. (laughs) And he's he's trying to hold on to that hairline. So, you know, (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> that he was not happy about them trying to tape anything in there. He's like, I don't want to lose any of my boys. <laughs> oh, that explains why it recedes throughout the movie. They just kept ripping tape off. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> maybe, oh, that's why his, uh, maybe that's why he looks so sad, because in between takes, he was crying every time they took the tape off, and he saw what was left <laughs> and still stuck to it. My hairline. <laughs> Are you ready on oh, set? Oh, give me a minute. Oh, <laughs> oh God. Um, all right. So, Billy, uh, the, everybody calms down from, you know, their drinking extravaganza. Nobody really seems drunk, but, you know, we're going to continue on past that. They're all chilling out. Ashley's sitting right next to Billy, and he's like, you know what? We should play a game. And he calls it, uh, I hope you don't know, which I guess is the spin-off of never have i ever Mm -hmm. um so i hope you don't know the rules are simple you tell a secret if the people in the room know the secret you drink if they no wait i'm writing backwards hold on (laughs) i had the same problem keeping up with it in the movie i was like wait who drinks when (laughs) if they (laughs) don't know your secret they drink if they do know their secret they don't drink Yes? Something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. (laughs) Um, Worst drinking game ever. Oh, my God. Yeah, it sounds awful because at this point, none of them are secrets anymore. So, (laughs) Lucy, I believe, um, admits that she got mono from smooching way back in middle school. She wasn't out of the sickness. She had mono from kissing people. Um. Margot admits that she had a crush on Billy, which is a big scandal because she was dating Pat at that time. So <laughs> poor nice guy, Pat. He brushes it off like a champ because he's the only good person in this movie. Mm-hmm. <laughs> True. Um, and then Ashley gets her le- spot in the lime or spot in the limelight. She gets her moment and starts to try to spill her secrets. Turns out everybody knows everything about this girl. There are no (laughs) secrets when it comes to Ashley. So first off, she starts with, she might have type two herpes, which I had to look up because I didn't realize there were multiple types. Um, Same. uh, Type two herpes, everybody knows. Like, yeah, kind of figured that that would happen at some point. Next one, she reveals that she has a shamrock tattoo on her labia. Once again, Everyone knows. Apparently, it was her profile pic for a year. Uh, which surprised that didn't get taken down. Yeah, anymore. hot Zuckerberg wanted it. Oh, wow. <laughs> he probably got it, knowing her reputation. Uh, and then, oh, finally, she's getting fed up at the fact that she has no secrets and that her life is an open book. And so she's like, you know what? Hey, Lucy, guess what? Um, I fucked your boyfriend. Lucy's absolutely devastated, uh, is trying to figure out why, because these are friends. And then all of a sudden, you've got Beth, who's been pretty silent up to this point. He's like, yeah, I I fucked him too. Um, Which shit hits the fan. And Billy, being an insensitive creep, stop being so upset that two of your very close friends slept with your now ex-boyfriend and just drink. Those are the rules. Yeah, is this where um, he says the words "calm down"? Because I don't take I don't take those words from any man yeah. very uh, well. <laughs> oh, and then we get the Not best good. quote: "The day we, because she tells him fuck the rules, or uh, I think Margot tells him fuck the rules. Like she's Lucy is in a bad place right now, and this is not helping." Um, to which Billy, being an absolute douche, says, "Quote." The day we fuck the rules of a drinking game is the day society crumbles. Ain't that the <laughs> truth? Bars. <laughs> bars. Facts. <laughs> Literal bars. 
It's somewhere in a country song. I'm sure of it. Oh my god! <laughs> okay. um, to which Lucy appropriately storms off. She's done with these guys. Um, we go back outside where another pizza man slams the door the exact same way. Is walking up with his headphones and his I don't know. I'm assuming Walkman, given the way these people are dressing. I love They're this bit the so guy, much. <laughs> turns too. around, gets stabbed, same way. Drops the pizzas perfectly once again. This pizza place. You're but you're every single right. time. It's the d- first, I love the dumb pizza boy trope, like in any movie, and <laughs> now each one says, "Huh?" huh? <laughs> huh? <laughs> like, I don't know. It was just getting me. I loved it. And that beautiful shot of blood, almost sriracha like, just nice little neat line across the pizza boxes. Nice. Did stacked. anyone get a little giggle out of hearing? the sound of it being sprayed onto the pizza box. <laughs> Is that really There's sick of me to laugh? Because it was just no. like, and you're like, ah. lots of good, um, <laughs> lots of good ASMR in this movie. Oh yes. my God. Yes. <laughs> Dude, I was totally doing that. I was doing that before we signed on. I was like, I should do ASMR. <laughs> <laughs> this is the place to do it. Oh, God. I really want to do ASMR. Well, oh, Tyler's right, so. not happy about this. <laughs> I just forgot that he has to edit this. And now he has to listen to all of our whispers. I'll just whisper the rest of this now. Are you doing it the time? I would like to Are you enjoy the episode. I'd be of the oh wait, like the nails on the. Oh, <laughs> that could have been much better. That. <laughs> That specific type of ASMR makes my skeleton want to come out of my body. <laughs> yes. It no, is that's not the best way to describe it. It is very upsetting. I do not like it. <laughs> do not oh, skeleton coming whispering. out of your body in a bad way? Oh, yeah. Like shooting straight <laughs> to the sun. Like, no. It's that your whispering. skeleton could have a good way or a bad way to come out of your body. <laughs> you can choose it. Sometimes you it's a good thing to having your bones removed. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Oh, anyway, okay. So, <laughs> sorry. Extremely comedic yes. moment of it, the shit happening the exact same way again. I wrote down, that's kind of funny, period. Uh, <laughs> so, I must have laughed. <laughs> um, cut back to inside. We've got Lucy. She's crying on the bed because her friends are the worst. When her best friend, Margot, shows up to help her calm down a little bit. Uh, and she says, what I think is super dumb, that the girls can't be blamed. It's definitely her ex's fault entirely. Which, Mm. no, I'm not on board with that. Everybody's to blame here. No, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Does anybody feel like this is like the common thing? Like this happens in real life in bars. You see that crying girl in the bathroom and the girl's like, oh no, girl, you're good. You're good. You know, like kind of like locking her down. (laughs) Is that just me or have you guys seen that? (laughs) I've been both women. For me. <laughs> You've been both women. You're, you're beautiful. You're beautiful. Don't worry about him. So we're gonna go. We're gonna go get some nachos, and you're gonna, you're gonna forget about him. We need some nachos. Right? Your boobs look great. Oh my god, you have the best boobs. <laughs> Don't worry about him. It's fine. You have empowerment. To find another guy. Maybe oh even a girl with a cute vagina. So Margot's talking her down as best as she can. And, and Lucy goes to a wipe away her mascara, which, by the way, not running at all. But she goes to wipe away her mascara. Well, that's because she's grabs... crying with no tears. <laughs> <laughs> well, she uses L'Oreal on a daily basis. <laughs> um, no more tears for those of you who are too young to understand that. Uh, no, 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 no. I... Yeah, I got, I got that. I like that. I like the L'Oreal tear ducts right up. You podcast. (laughs) (laughs) The outside world, outside of our, like, oh my gosh, how young are the listeners? I don't know. Listeners, are you really young? Are you really old? Tell us. 50 year old men. 50 50 year old men. 50 year old men. Well, I don't know if they're shampoo. (laughs) Yeah, they might know, but not know the L'Oreal reference either. I thought that was um, Johnson and Johnson. Oh, oh shit! Yeah, yeah. Is it Johnson and Johnson that makes the shampoo? Yes. yes. Wait, no. L'Oreal, L'Oreal had the bottle with the like fish with the, with the one eye. Yes, L'Oreal kids. No tears. Oh, mm-hmm. 
Yeah. Oh. Or is it no tears? Someone told me once that it was, at, it actually says no tears. Well, they like, can tear. Go to hell. I don't know. Yeah. I no. think that's incorrect. Let's go with tears. Tears and tears. Like tears. <laughs> What? Anyway, so she's she's crying on the bed. She goes to wipe away this imaginary mascara, grabs a cloth off the bed, and lo and behold, it's panties. This is a problem. So she's unlike a normal person who would be like, oh no, shouldn't use this and set it down. Margo's like, ah, those are mine, my bad. And Lucy immediately holds it closer to her face and takes a big ass whiff. Mm. who does that so she smells this and goes oh this smells like the vagina that was on my boyfriend because that's so easily identifiable (laughs) (laughs) a smell no one would ever forget at this point lucy knows margo knows and margo shyly admits yeah i kind of also slept with him so now Lucy officially has basically no friends in this house because they've all betrayed her. Um, yeah, it, it's great. Uh, so we cut away from that because why would we stay at a nice climactic moment? Uh, and we go back downstairs where Eva is calling the pizza place yet again because lo and behold, the pizza didn't show up. Um, that's because they were stabbed. Uh, the pizza place once again is like, we sent somebody over. It's kind of weird where they're going, but you know what? Don't worry. We'll send you another pizza. At this point, this pizza place should be calling the cops. Um, <laughs> they're all of their employees. Definitely. Are you okay with not having any employees? Like, I'm Dozens so of pizza boys missing. No one. Yeah, that's also, also, let's, think, let's think about this for a second, though. Realistically, if this was the real world, this is America, we're assuming. So we're assuming that uh, the place would be very interested in not exactly their employees, but probably their money and say that these kids are probably prank calling to say (laughs) that uh, they could get some free pizzas by just saying, well, darn it, my pizza never showed up. (laughs) I don't know, man. Eva was aggressive on the phone. She was so aggressive. (laughs) Karen. (laughs) If my pizza didn't show up, I would not be calling. I'm like, you know what? That's just on God. I'm sorry, I don't get pizza tonight. <laughs> and I sure- called those people like three different times aggressively. I would have been oh, scared no. of her. <laughs> I'd be showing up at the store. I'd be like, where's my fucking pizza? I'm hungry. I'm <laughs> sure that we'll get to this eventually. But also, can we, can we talk about the fact that, you know, with all these pizza boys, they were all driving the car? How many themed cars <laughs> does this place have? They're not even like... Little things that you attach to the top of the roof, like Jimmy John. No, these are full decals on the side of the door. They get <laughs> business, <laughs> dude. <laughs> well, those cars just like cars on the cars. street. It's absolutely wild. Do like, do they rent these cars out on the weekend? I can't imagine they have this many orders that they're okay <laughs> with all the pizza boys and all the cars are gone. Your they- Uber's outside and it's a pizza truck. <laughs> no, why oh not? At God. this point, they've got so many. <laughs> oh. Oh my god all right um billy and oh this time i called her type two <laughs> i just oh keep my god um, <laughs> well, we all know who you're talking about so <laughs> yeah B- billy and ashley are out there making on the couch very aggressively i might say um Ugh. and it's a really long shot enough so that i got up left to grab something came back and they were still making out on the couch nasty <laughs> um and obviously Pat can't get comfortable. He is sitting on the couch next to them, not on the same couch, but on a different couch in a close vicinity and just sitting there. And um, Billy, noticing that his friend is slightly awkward and not enjoying himself, leans over to Beth and is like, Beth, you know what? You guys, just just go ahead. You do it. We're going to do it. We'll just all do it. Um, and uh, Beth is fully on board with this idea. So she climbs onto Pat's lap. Good guy Pat's like you know what? You're not in a good headspace. I don't think you're well enough to give consent. And she's like, shut up. We're doing this right now. And then proceeds to do, I'm not exactly sure. Cause I thought she was rubbing herself, but I don't think she made any contact. I think it was just like a hand. Yeah. In front. I was, she was I like was, finding the action. I was noticing that. <laughs> uh, really? Contact with anything didn't happen. Um, and she's just being 
super weird. Um, let's see. I love that he was a good guy about it. He was such like, a good guy. In these about like it. shitty movies, I'm sure that from what you guys have overheard or what you've seen of these shitty movies, there's not that many good guys Mm-mm. in these movies, <laughs> nope. especially when it comes to um, taking advantage of drunk girls. So I was I was happy to see that they that they made him a good guy. <laughs> uh, it was which it was sucks good. to even like say that that should be a thing. That's a thing. Oh, this yeah, day pretty- and age with our horrible D movies and their tropes of taking advantage of women. Yeah. Where do they get off? Pun not intended. Please do not. <laughs> so they get off to a lot not. of things <laughs> in a lot of places. Well, Pat's just such a good guy. He's sitting there and she's doing God only knows what miming in front. At some point she starts <laughs> punching. I can only describe it as jerking off. I, I don't know. I I'm just sure. doing some sort of ASL. Starts- yeah. <laughs> <laughs> At some point, she starts punching her lower abdomen. I guess whatever gets you going. She she does eventually reach down and she just gives up and goes, "What?" It, she goes, "Nope, I've got quote coke puss." I laughed. <laughs> I laughed so much. Yeah. Very laughed funny. <laughs> I shouldn't have laughed. I laughed so bad. I, um, <laughs> it was, that was, that was my favorite line in the whole movie. I hate I'm it. Sorry. I hate it. <laughs> What an absurd thing that they wrote. Like, <laughs> that was not what I was expecting. <laughs> just immediately after that, she continues on to go, I've done too much coke, and now there's no way it's ever gonna get soft. <laughs> soft? I don't know. Yeah, that, that one confused me. I wasn't sure what was happening. Does she have a the rock? opposite of dudes, I guess? Is yeah, that what they're going know. for? Soft was not There's the adjective that I was anticipating. Face. <laughs> <laughs> was yeah, I'm not confused. sure. Uh, made absolutely no sense, but I, I did highlight got soft. There's not going to get soft. So <laughs> do with that what you will. Um, you do, and then you she girl. immediately passes out on the couch. The other two are still making out and Pat sits there uncomfortably. Still being good guy. Uh, then we cut back to upstairs where we are getting the funniest montage oh I've ever seen in my life of a split screen where we see them scrolling through their iPhones separately in different rooms, looking back on their memories. Weirdly enough, looking at the photos at the exact same time. Mm-hmm. They're singing the same song we heard in the car earlier. This is such a sad moment about the relationship and you see them singing, crossing each other's frames until they actually bump each other in the hallway and switch screens. Margot was one on one side, Lucy on the left, and now they're opposites. They continue to sing their sad song, essentially back to back in the same room. And I, this is, it was just too much for me. Um, they both just sing sadly that they're not getting back together. I still feel like this was a nod to Taylor Swift. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and so ends my weird section of partying and heartbreak. It's still a great song, though. <laughs> <laughs> Next section uh, starts with another pizza guy showing up because, you know, they're all getting killed. So he shows up in a Hawaiian shirt and walks up to the house. Thinks he hears something, takes off his headphones, looks back and says, huh? Turns back towards the house, puts his headphones on, whatever. And turns to find old Baghead in his knife and gets sliced like a Zai he's about to deliver. (laughs) And it shows the blood dripping on the two pizzas. Exactly the same way as every guy. Well, I guess I should say pizza guy before him. But wait, another pizza guy. Another pizza guy. Another pizza guy. Six more pizza dudes show up and all get sliced and diced by Baghead what? in the exact same sequence. <laughs> oh my huh? god. Eight what pizza guys, mean? eight cars, and 16 pizzas have gone missing. <laughs> right? I'm just super impressed that they've been able to keep employees or how <laughs> they even have employees right now. <laughs> but we cut to Ashley... AKA Slutty McSlutterson. 
and Billy <laughs> making out hardcore on the couch in front of poor nerdy Pat and his head wound. They do this awkward bit where she's whispering seductively and Billy is here and what they're going to do and get some privacy. And then just says the part that whispers out loud, we'll have sex and then I'll suck your cock. (laughs) Pat points out the obvious that she doesn't know how whispering works. It's so bad. It's so bad. But Ashley knows the point. She knows the point because, you know, she's going to take the point and it's going to explode. <laughs> <laughs> so Ashley's acting out everything that her and Billy are going to go do, including a lot of double dicking where the second <laughs> dick comes into play. I really don't know. Yeah. Uh, but even breaks out the imaginary pepper grinder like she's a sexy server at Olive Garden. And of course... <laughs> Tosses the imaginary sexy salad. That's a classic move. Have you never heard of the, the peppering the pepper the grinder? Salad? Classic no. role play. I know, whenever they ask me if you would like pepper on that, and they start doing it, ooh, you gotta, you gotta clean me up. It's bad. I have to excuse myself. <laughs> just keep grinding that cheese. <laughs> just, just, just tell me when. Cheese. I'll fucking tell you when. <laughs> yeah, I'll tell you. When. So Ashley exits to the garage to get ready for their big old bang it out session. Billy tries to encourage Pat that he needs to go take take a shot with Lucy. Pat says it's not a good idea because she's going through a lot right now with her with her breakup and all her friends are being whores and whatnot. He's fine with keeping things on a friendship tip. And then kindly on occasion, Billy gets weirdly intimate in Plainfield and goes for Pat's wiener. Yeah, that was that was really weird. <laughs> it was awkward. I think also as awkward as Billy's laugh at one point where he's like, <laughs> oh, my oh, God, yes, yes. somebody <laughs> brought it up. OK, oh. I thought I was like hallucinating that. That was weird. <sighs> no, but it was really long and just very <laughs> yeah. like. <laughs> and of course, Ryan was like, well, that's the point. He's funny. <laughs> and I'm like, no, it's no, obnoxious. No. <laughs> Sarah, you do that really well. <laughs> <laughs> so there's like this then really awkward bit where Billy then puts his hand on Pat's knee and then Pat puts his hand on Billy's hand and then Billy puts his ha- hand on Pat's hand and then Pat really tops it off you know and there's just like that that moment together I was waiting for another they, random and- hand to come in <laughs> to, like, end well it. at first I was like wait where are all these hands coming from and then I was like oh wait they're just stacking yeah <laughs> I was, I was ready for like a hand or like just a random like hoof to just come in for <laughs> no reason Beth wakes up from her her coke coma and is like you guys hide in the coke put your hand right on top <laughs> <laughs> tries or, to like, look that- under <laughs> Or like old blue eyes from the beginning with her like yellow pat mother shoe just slips in there. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Are you towing my dick? Yeah. <laughs> yes. I hate that phrase so much. Oh, Horrible. I hate it. Never it's knew just... I could hate a phrase more. <laughs> I know. You just copple like Pat's balls with like, you know, Billy's hand and yellow shoe. Like <laughs> <laughs> it ends with that really weird, friendly knuckle pound, like. You know, mm-hmm. so we then cut to uh, Lisa sulking in a bedroom. Eva goes to check on her and make sure she's OK. Lisa, thanks, <laughs> Eva, for being her Hold only on. friend. <laughs> I knew somebody else was going to do it. <laughs> what? I'm only laughing because <laughs> Lisa's reaction is too good. <laughs> Did I do it? No, you said Eva correctly. (laughs) (laughs) You were just so excited to talk to me. (laughs) I get it. You just said Lisa on accident instead of Lucy. That's oh, yeah, that's that's it. Sorry, nobody's gonna explain what happened. (laughs) We all just assume everybody knows. (laughs) Okay, she's like, "What did I do?" Well, here's the best part. Sean helped me with my notes, and Sean wrote Lisa. So. It's Sean's fault. It's his fault. (laughs) Sean. Oh, he wrote you into this whole section too. So apparently he wants to see me in another movie. I get it. (laughs) Who does it? It was great to work with. (laughs) A joy, even. (laughs) I'm a delight. (laughs) 
you, <laughs> I guess he's seeing you in this scene. I'm sorry, Tyler. I have I'm no sorry. problem with that. <laughs> So Lucy is sulking in a bedroom. <laughs> Eva goes to check on her and make sure she's okay. Lucy thanks Eva for being her only friend, not to bang her boyfriend, but the bond and friendship. And then, and then the sexual tension starts and they get closer and closer. <laughs> we all knew it was coming. Yeah. You had to just, because- it was, it's not if, but yeah. when. The check right? <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. you can check I always it thought it was going to be Margo. And Lucy. Right? Me too. Mm-hmm. Me too. First so I guess that was, was the like, twist. The, these, they're totally going to hook up. Mm-hmm. And Trevor was like, I don't know. We'll see. And I was so sad when it <laughs> happened to be not Margot. Yeah, because I feel like the sexual chemistry was there between Lucy and Margot. For mm-hmm. sure. The tension was there from the start. Yeah, right. opportunity <laughs> missed. Yeah. Right. Well, especially with, you know, they're never getting back together. Yeah. They obviously oh, yeah. had that had that moment but you know with eva it's it's the quiet ones you always gotta look out for. you gotta watch out <laughs> telling you ah <sighs> lesbian scene but no lucy gets the text Bing. it's brett her ex breaking up the provocative scene meanwhile old baghead was watching the whole thing through the window beating his meat and very disappointed that they stopped right before it got good <sighs> i was gonna say the dog was <sighs> shopping wiener I was, like, that was shocking to me. I was surprised. Yeah, there was, there was um, wiener. I didn't mean yes. that. There was wiener. There was like, wiener. Just immediately dong. When I see dong, I think, oh my god, immediate danger. You know, <laughs> like I will say, violence. I am, I am surprised that we did not see full frontal female nudity, but we saw a disembodied penis. Yeah, yeah. I was very surprised, and not even just like some floppy dick happening somewhere like in game of thrones this was a hard dick oh yeah mm-hmm. like it was very 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 i painful. thought it was hard. your hunky cop anna i really did oh. i thought i thought it was her. <laughs> she wishes <laughs> um no like the dong stuff is always for the men like let's let's keep it real like it's, it's i've never them. been less aroused in my life <laughs> i know it's like they're the ones talking about it all the time drawing cocks it's like this the dong shop was it was it necessary i, I don't know i don't know i appreciated it though i really did <laughs> okay. i don't know if you see my face but like i'm blushing i don't <laughs> <laughs> this kind of conversation does not come up in my life and i'm over here just like pulling my hood over Aww. my head just, like, oh. that's, <laughs> that's so okay cute. we're talking to you about makeup and now we're gonna talk to you and about dong. penises it's just wonderful <laughs> i feel i feel so so special here <laughs> so now we'll cut to beth the cokehead is hydrating in the kitchen and margo is checking her phone Eva, the host, enters and berates them for ruining the party. You won't stop doing blow. And you banged your best friend's boyfriend. And the pizza never showed up. I do feel bad for Eva. She really did just want everyone to get together. Eva got the short end of the stick in this story. You know, there's always the mom of the group. That's her. Mm -hmm. Hence why I was convinced that that was a mom in the beginning. (laughs) (laughs) And the bad makeup. Now we're... We'll cut to uh, Ashley and Billy gearing up to get down and dirty in the car in the garage. And I couldn't you know, be more excited. Yeah. You know, because why would you have car sex when you got a whole house? But I don't know. The bedrooms are for sulking. That's where you cry it's, over people sleeping yes. with your boyfriend. True. True. And never getting back together. Yeah. I nanny two girls under the age of three, so I constantly sing everything just so that no one is crying. <laughs> I have like classrooms full of students um, that I call like my audience. So, you know, being a teacher, you don't have to stop your love for performance. I sing Beautiful. my directions to them. <laughs> there you go. And they're my captive audience and they don't have a choice. <laughs> You will sit and you will listen. Absolutely. Stop talking just, or you're getting not a detention. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, Lisa. That's not far off. Next time we do ladies' night, it'll be the musical edition. Oh, oh yes. please. <laughs> Tyler would love that. Please. <laughs> I didn't want to see that penis. 
is really uncomfortable. <laughs> Where the fuck is the pizza? <laughs> The ducks are covered in blood. <laughs> blood, blood, blood. The bra scene is a dance scene. Will they, won't they, will they, won't they? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my face. Hurts. Where does that leave us? So uh... now uh, we do a fun role reversal where Billy is saying, uh, things that girls supposedly say in regards to uh, giving a blow job, but it's actually going down on her. Okay, fine. I'll do it. But you got to let me know when you're going to blow last time you got it in my eye <laughs> and Billy starts eating her out and she starts to bark orders at him too fast. Slow down. No, up, up, down. No, no, right there. And she just that awkward, like grabs her, his head. And just kind of really slams it in there. <laughs> it's such an awkward scene. Oh. <laughs> Can you imagine being the actress though? Like, like I don't know. I, I hate I, it. It's so awkward. I hate it. So we now have Eva in the backyard calling the pizza place again, and she is pissed. Uh, the pizza never showed up. Uh, then she notices a slice of pizza, and then a bloody mm. pizza box. And then a dead pizza guy. But wait, there's another dead guy. And another dead pizza guy. And a dead pizza guy hanging from a tree. Everybody I that liked one. that one. The yes. pizza <laughs> graveyard was a good goof. That was pretty cool. I liked it. Pizza graveyard. Yeah. Uh, more bloody pizza. More bloody pizza guys. All the pizza dudes have been slaughtered in the backyard. Probably like 20 of them. Mm-hmm. Sliced and diced. Beautiful. A lot of waste of fucking pizza. Yeah. That's true. That's the a real true tragedy. tragedy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I got you, Sarah. <laughs> but but hold on now. That pizza is not gone. The blood only got on the top box. box. There were two That's pizzas true. every time. That we got half true. those pizzas still ready it's to eat. salvageable. Right? It is. It is. I would take it home. <laughs> here's here's a thought. Back back to the pizza. I don't understand. So he put these bodies in the yard. He put the pizzas in the yard. Where are all the cars? Right? Well, that's what I was saying before. I'm like, are they just lined up down the street? Like, just parked. No in front one's of the really house. thinking about it. I think there's like a block party or something. Just a yeah, right? bunch <laughs> of pizza cars. It's a, great pizza party. Eva is obviously very concerned about this. But before she can call the cops or warn her friends, old baghead pops out and slits her throat. But we cut to Eva's not dead. Uh, it's an obvious homage to the famous Drew Barrymore scene and scream. Eva's Thank pounding you. on the. I said that, and Ryan was like, "Eh." <laughs> <laughs> so Ryan would know. He knows every reference to every movie ever made. <laughs> right, all of them. He was on a game every show once. Single for horror one. trivia. <laughs> <laughs> He's a professional. Did you know that when we started dating, he sent that to me so that I could watch him on this game show? Oh, no. Oh, my God. Oh, yeah. And, oh. and you've never been oh, horny. No. You were impressed. Right? Oh, my God. So impressed. He was yeah. such a fox. <laughs> Hi, I'm Ryan, and I'm about to lose in round two. <laughs> oh, <for> Ryan. <laughs> Listen to the sound of my gravelly voice. <laughs> He's in there cackling right now. <laughs> <laughs> Motherfuckers <laughs> listening. <laughs> oh my God. Sorry, oh, Sarah. So much. No, it's all right. When when Ryan was our roommate in Chicago, he, uh, I had a, a chocolate lab named Hendy. And he talks about he, Hendy all the time. Did he tell you about uh, his uh, Frankenstein bust and how my dog was always so freaked out about it? So Ryan would chase my poor dog around that, like the apartment oh with God. it. Because he's a fucking asshole. <laughs> Your poor dog. Oh, my God. Now he has a dog. Okay. And he treats her like a princess. He loves oh, and adores my. her and dotes on her. Aww. He acts like she's a fucking person, which I mean, they are in our minds because we don't have kids. Oh, but- God, it's amazing. <laughs> no traumatizing this dog. No <laughs> traumatizing this dog. <laughs> she's as salty and shitty as him. So. Oh, okay. <laughs> I hope he's a gravy train. 
<laughs> like I said, Eva's not dead. She's pounding on the glass door, trying to get Pat's attention, who has his headset on playing some Call of Duty or something. But she can't scream because her throat is cut. So she's trying to write help on the uh, window in her blood. But she does it backwards. And then he kind of sees something going on the window behind him. So Pat looks back and he sees her. But he's not understanding what it is because help is written backwards. So then she's wiping it off and then she's wiping down her neck and she's writing help and trying to get the other way. But before she can finish, he just old bag head comes up and just completely finishes Eva off with a stab after brutal stab. All while Pat has this in-depth conversation about race uh, <laughs> from his new friend, <laughs> Comfort 69. Um, on the other side, on the other side of his headset, so. he's resetting video game culture, toxic yeah. masculinity in video game <laughs> culture, and I love it. He's so yeah. progressive. Yeah, I Pat. Yeah, Bears Bears everywhere love- are quaking. <laughs> I love when he's pounding so hard on the glass, and he's like, "Hold on, this is an he's important conversation." He just holds yeah. up one right. finger behind him, like, <laughs> "You wait, wait, wait." He's too busy being a nice man. Well, because you don't say with the end. Changing the world. I'm changing the way we game. (laughs) I did enjoy the killer windexing the blood. Oh, yes, that was was great. I I was. I was like, where did you get the bottle of dying at that? That was amazing. (laughs) Just pull it out of your fucking back pocket. Clean up the blood. Move on. Yeah, the bodies littered all over the yard. Dirty window, not on my watch. Mm -mm. (laughs) Absolutely not. (laughs) My section picks up. With Ashley and Billy, whose name I truly did not recall until we started talking about him in depth. (laughs) I just called him Guy. Guy. Just Guy. I knew none of their names the entire movie. No other qualifiers. (laughs) Just Guy. (laughs) So um, Ashley is in the car getting sad head from (laughs) Billy. (laughs) <laughs> like Carnalingus, <laughs> which Tyler came up with. I loved that. Carnalingus, so amazing. You refuse to acknowledge it. I refuse to acknowledge it. it. I I you it. have to acknowledge it. I have wiped it from my brain. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um. So yeah, she's not really into it, and he's given it his best, which admittedly doesn't look like it's a lot. Um, I appreciate it, oh, the no. time he invested. There was some time involved. We there like some had some whole murders happen, mm-hmm. and he's still like in there. For, for what a <laughs> douchebag he is, taking that time, you you got to give it to him. That's yeah, that's a real champ but there. On the other side of the coin, Ashley is obviously dissatisfied, bored, and to be <laughs> frank. If that were happening and I were as obviously bored as Ashley was and something wasn't changing, cut it off. Cut the camera. That, cameras. Sucks. that yeah. sucks. You're not no. you're not paying attention to like like what's happening here. I don't want I, I mean maybe he is and we just don't anymore. know it. If she was saying like up, he's probably going up. And she's like, eh. but she wasn't redirecting him. She was, right. she was just like, mm, it is what at it that is. point. Like, yeah, she's, she's just giving like, up, and he's like, yeah, no, <laughs> she's like, try. I'm gonna make like, this happen. Like- he's trying. I'm, you know yeah. what? As much of a douche as he is, I'm on his side with that one because he's like, I'm trying. I'm gonna, I'm. Damn it! You're gonna, you're gonna splooge. I promise. <laughs> It just, it just like, makes me feel bad for her labia honestly <laughs> like, he's getting tested for type geez. 2 herpes and he's still down there oh yeah okay yeah i thought about that yeah, yeah. he's used to it god bless him bless them both you know what bless them do both. your thing god bless you do your thing if you're that horny have at it you do you boo boo so while Ashley is highly dissatisfied with what's happening to her at the moment, oh no, the killer is in the side mirror. Oh no, the killer's in the garage with them while they're having sex. This cannot be good. Uh, no surprise, the killer attempts to murder Ashley. It turns out he is successful. <laughs> uh, he comes up behind her because 
the window is open while they're in the car having sex in the garage make it make sense um so he comes up behind her has some sort of wire something strangles her she's dying and funny enough wouldn't you know her dying mimics an orgasm almost (laughs) perfectly (laughs) how crazy is that crazy (laughs) Uh, so (laughs) old guy down there between her legs does not even realize that she is being murdered in the car with him uh so silly which i thought was clever i thought that was pretty funny She's like slapping on his head and shit. Like it's, it was very goofy. I really she appreciated that. Going, great job. Great job. Great job. <laughs> that's, what, that's what he thought was happening. He thought he was really doing it. <laughs> and I will uh, say his tidy whities were a surprise to me. I love the tidy whities. <laughs> I was not that was a nice surprise. That. Anytime mm-hmm. I see tidy whities in any movie or show or anything, I, my visceral reaction is just go, no. <laughs> or the, ooh. I just don't Ooh. believe that anyone other than like a very aged grandfather is wearing those. This guy, no. Well, no. Lisa, this movie is turning those assumptions um, and stereotypes around on um, its head. I'm stereotype shaming. I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I did not mean. It. I apologize. No, My thing with the tidy whities, Jock bro, for your tidy whities. It's like I think we should have our significant others bring it back. Just. Yeah, <laughs> they would be the ones out of anyone to pull it off. <laughs> Ryan's not going to want to do it. <laughs> they need to do a whole episode where they just sit around in tidy whities and talk about how comfortable they are. Where these shit tidy whities? <laughs> <laughs> oh god, they're cutting off my ball circulation. <laughs> Even write their names on them, you know. <laughs> Put them on the tag and for them. Them. <laughs> them back. Just like they're at camp. Billy finally realizes as he lifts his head from the Mons of Ashley. Uh, She has been murdered. She is dead in front of him. He promptly loses his shit, gets out of the car and is screaming, which I really appreciated. I thought that this guy's acting in this scene was so great. He was a joy to watch while he was just absolutely losing his shit. (laughs) I loved it. I loved it. He was great. (laughs) I hated that I loved it. (laughs) Uh, so the killer is not they can't see them uh, very obviously in the garage they're hidden somewhere and he's screaming he's looking for them oh my god get out here and uh killer appears and he's right in his face and billy just screams just all out (laughs) screams and it was glorious it was one of the funniest things that happened in the movie because they are just like nose to nose (laughs) they're right there together screaming uh and then billy either gets knocked down somehow or loses his footing ends up on the ground and then gets his head smashed in with a mallet by the killer so unfortunately for our lovers they have met their demise. <laughs> <laughs> um, I wrote in my notes, uh, killer appears, three exclamation points, guy killed with a mallet. Um, from there, we jump cut to Lucy looking very sad in one of the bedrooms upstairs and a wild pat appears <laughs> and he's being the nice guy. Um, and it's like, hey, what's going on? I just came up here to change my bandage because I got hit in the head with a dart tonight for some reason. Lucy volunteers to change Pat's bandage, which gave me equal parts. Warm, fuzzy feelings and like, oh no, I'm worried for Ashley feelings because we know that like Pat potentially has feelings for her. She's single oh no, what if he misinterprets this as Ashley, like, not Ashley, Lucy. <laughs> I was going to say, I was like, wait, Ashley, I think she's dead in the garage. Ashley but, yeah. is dead in the garage, sorry. <laughs> Lucy's upstairs, she's upset. Um, but yeah, Lucy, like, agrees to change his bandage. I was a little nervous because I was, I could feel it about to go, oh no, Pat's mm. going to take this as her, like, making a move on him. Luckily, that's not what happened at all. Yeah. And their conversation was very pleasant. <laughs> um, Pat was a little weird. I'm going to chalk that up to him having a head injury. Um, but Lucy is talking about her friendship with 
um, Margot and how they were like best friends. They were even moon sisters. They got their periods at the same time, which getting your period at the same time as a group of women is a very normal common occurrence. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Calling somebody your moon sister is not something I've heard before. And it kind of put me off a little bit. (laughs) Tyler asked me if that was a thing. I was like, no, (laughs) I don't think so. I hope not. (laughs) But as, I'm not going to lie. As soon as she said, we're moon sisters, I mimicked her immediately. I was like, we're moon sisters. Because <laughs> it's just such a stupid thing to say that you can't get not... our periods at the same yeah. time. She, I love her. She's my moon sister. <laughs> like, you have to just, it's so stupid. You have to mock it. It was so bad. <laughs> so Pat responds to that in a very sweet way, albeit still strange. Um he responds with a very friendship is beautiful message. And I have a direct quote from him. He says, BFs come and go, but BFFs, those are forever. And that was very sweet. That was a very tender moment between Lucy and Pat. And I am now convinced that Pat is a brony because friendship is magic. Uh, I'm convinced. <laughs> you cannot tell me otherwise. Pat is 100% a brony. Uh, between, between the weird gaming discourse that was a little bit ahead ahead of its time and uh friendship is magic you gotta love your moon sister i love it so much brony (laughs) see i called it earlier when i said there was going to be a random hoof come in that would just like sit on top of the other it's like pink and purple (laughs) with glitter (laughs) <laughs> beautiful 2d animation oh just slides God, into frame <laughs> i love it so much <laughs> so at that point they have their nice little tender moment uh pat gets his head wound bandage changed and margo appears in the doorway and would like to speak with lucy about what happened and <laughs> i made a note here margo's glasses lenses are gone again when she appeared <laughs> in the doorway I wish I would have noticed uh, that. Fuck. It was so frustrating the entire time. Yeah. <laughs> so Margo appears, and then we cut to Beth in the bathroom. Once again, one of the funniest scenes in the entire movie. This was beautiful. The actress that plays, <laughs> that plays Beth is one of my favorite people in the entire world. I just want to hug her. I love She's her great. so much. She's great. <laughs> you did such a good job. <laughs> Whoever you are, uh, I Beth. love you so much. <laughs> um. <laughs> So Beth is yelling at herself in the mirror, (laughs) enacting what she would be saying in an argument. Um, And it's very funny (laughs) because she is obviously very, very out of her head on drugs. And she is being very relatable, actually yelling at herself in the mirror because I do the same thing. If I want to argue with you, I will never actually argue with you. I'll just argue with myself in the mirror. (laughs) Your conversations are a staple in most women's life. Mm -hmm. I don't care what anybody says. Constantly, I'll just be in the mirror like, did you really do that today? Can you? (laughs) It's it's healthy. Mm -hmm. It's healthy. It's a catharsis. Or like practicing practicing an argument that you wish you had done like 10 minutes ago with someone. All of the witty things that you wish you'd said in the argument previously. In the argument, you're just staring back at the person. And then like 10 minutes later, you're in the mirror and you're like, you know what? Well, you suck. (laughs) (laughs) You know what? Fuck you. (laughs) You've got like a whole bunch of quips. I'm like, you could have said something funnier. (laughs) See what you got to do. So whenever the the actual like Zoom call ends, just keep recording and keep recording your little (laughs) bits. And then Tyler can just like edit them in. Just scramble them in like confetti. You catch them Tyler has got like seven hours of footage. Right. To <laughs> I'm going to take it a step further into crazy and say that I practice arguments that haven't occurred. I'm like, what if this guy comes up to me and he's like, Ooh, Ooh, you're such a bitch. And I'm like, yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yes. I'm crazy. Right. No. <laughs> yes. 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 Absolutely. You need to rehearse. Oh you need to be prepared. <laughs> There's an infinite number of interactions that you could have. You need to prepare for every single one of them. If we ever do this again, uh, in the future, we'll just go ahead and take a quick five-minute break in between each of our sections. Go give ourselves a pep talk and come back. I love it. (laughs) (laughs) Yes. What'd you guys talk about? We'll all be like, nothing. 
Is that what Trevor does when he like leaves the office when they're recording? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you think he's giving himself a Probably. pep talk every time? He's like, it's like, man, you're so funny. You're doing a great job, man. <laughs> Tyler no, says he's like, going to the bathroom. All the time. <laughs> he's like, oh yeah, man, sorry, I got a piss. And they're like, man, you're doing so good. I'm so proud of you today. <laughs> they, all, they all act like so just like, yeah, no, I'm going to go take a shit. That's so funny. And then they're in the bathroom. They're like, you can do your, it. Your it's humor okay. is so good. You are so emotionally <laughs> intelligent. You landed perfectly. Couldn't have gone better. You got this. They like you. They're your friends. This is a safe place. And then they come out. They're like, ah. Positive <laughs> 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 reinforcement all the time. Dick joke, dick joke. <laughs> <laughs> After Margot's yelling in the bathroom at herself, um, she makes, did I say Margot? Yes, you did. God, I am so bad at names. I am so sorry. Beth, I'm just fucking makes thrilled. Feel so much better about myself. <laughs> I don't know my own name. Sorry. <laughs> just remember, she's Beth because she's the Beth one in the movie. Hey. <laughs> okay. <Bye. laughs> now I will remember her name. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, so Beth pep talks herself she's like yeah you're a bad bitch if anybody crosses you you're gonna get them and uh she makes the very rational smart decision to save Rusty Joe in the mirror three times uh and then she does (laughs) and uh she does a line of coke as you do which I I really appreciated that in these scenes it was very very obvious that there were two completely different powders two completely different consistencies that were on that board one one of which i think was salt sugar (laughs) sugar. (laughs) and then we have like a finer powder over to the side it's good to have variety (laughs) continuity it's beautiful it it costs very little money (laughs) also we call it variety for now (laughs) every time we looked at her she had white powder on the inside of the rim of her nose like yeah "Hmm." So good then we job. Guess that, that good the detail. other ones were her. like for show for the film, but then the other ones I'm gonna guess because I've heard that they do this a lot is they use like vitamin C powder when they have someone snort cocaine in a movie they use like vitamin C powder because they actually it's snort like, it yeah because it's like not what? deadly for you to do that. Depends I have on too many sinus doing. issues. But the Sorry. amount that <laughs> no, she's doing, dang. <laughs> that sounds painful. She's going to yeah, have one hell of an immune, immune system. Of Jesus. <laughs> that that hurt. was awful. That was awful. <laughs> um, so she does her line of questionable powder. She raises her head up. And lo and behold, our killer is behind her in the mirror. What? Yes. Yes. Oh, no. So our killer takes her by the back of her lovely little head and uh, smashes her face into the mirror and pulls her back. She didn't feel a thing. I love that. She is that. so out of her head on Coke. She don't even feel it. It's great. Which that honestly, was... good for her. She has a high pain tolerance. <laughs> Beautiful. Chef, <laughs> it was Chef's amazing. kiss. Her delivery on that just, <laughs> no, I didn't feel it. I loved it. I loved it in so the, much. In the event I ever meet the misfortune of being murdered, I really hope that my pain tolerance will come in someday so that when my killer attempts to kill me, I can be like, nah, bro, try harder. Like, <laughs> we just have to do a shit ton of coke. Yeah. I'm in pain That's... all day, every day. Fuck with me. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> I accept the challenge. <laughs> I totally see you as the person to be like, gets attacked has a high pain tolerance and just goes, huh, that's cute. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. Thanks for interrupting me. I'm going to continue my grocery run now. Aww, Thanks. Are you going to murder me? Oh, that's really cute. <laughs> that's cute. <laughs> Little Mr. Murderer. I would love to bully a kidnapper or a killer. Oh, yeah. I would love to bully a murderer. I'm going to bully the shit out of them. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're going to kill me? Oh, I'm so I could have done that better. Literally, you I've been take trying me for hostage. years. <laughs> Someone's angry. I want to kill people. Mm. I'm a big bad mortal. I got big feelings. Big feelings for a little man. <laughs> Do you drive a big car? 
You need a big part to feel like a big scary man. Look at me <laughs> with my big bloody knife. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like you. I'm gonna stab you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the murderer would get so annoyed with me, they would just like fucking leave. They'd be like, get out of just go. Just Whatever. go anywhere. <laughs> I, don't, I don't even care if you tell someone. Just go. <laughs> okay. I would just link them my Twitter and let them read the unhinged <laughs> shit that I tell I'm done. You made me snort. I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> sorry guys you don't want me trust me <laughs> it's like, Cassandra, i snorted earlier so don't worry about it. oh yeah no <laughs> i'm just hoping i was far enough You're back <laughs> just step away from the microphone <laughs> it's beautiful uh well the killer continues to smash Beth's head into the mirror. <laughs> she continues to like not feel anything. And it's probably one of the bad, most badass moments of the movie. She just doesn't give a shit. Uh, the final smash, she comes back and she like is covered in blood and it's coming out of her mouth. And she's like, that's some good Coke. <laughs> that, was some, that was some chunky blood, dude. It oh, was a little yeah. gross. <laughs> I was like... <laughs> Oh God! That Imagine was nasty. having to have that in your mouth and like push it out of your mouth like that. It's, it's chocolate syrup. No big deal. Gross. <laughs> Gross. It was. Oh, it was nasty. I'm looking at it now. It was not. Oh, I was not a fan. So from the from the smash, um, the killer finish her finishes her off by smashing her head in again. Um, also featuring the second uh, clip of that glass with the blood on it in the movie that is a clip that's already been used once in this motion picture and i was like oh hey nice reusing some footage there boys great job Mm. yeah good catch multitasking okay use it again (laughs) why shoot it twice when you can just use it again i did not notice that 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 felt film, very that proud filming of technique definitely <laughs> comes into play later, but I didn't notice it here. <laughs> I didn't even notice. I was just too into seeing what Beth was gonna do or say next between every <laughs> head blow. I was so excited. I didn't even notice that. I was like, "What's she gonna do?" What's she gonna? Ah, she doesn't even notice. Ah, ah. <laughs> she doesn't even care. It's great. She doesn't give a shit. <laughs> <laughs> I was so excited. And unfortunately, that's where. We leave Beth uh, forever. Well, not completely. Anyway, uh, we cut back to uh, Lucy and Margot in the bedroom. Margot like uh, acknowledges the fact that what she did was fucked up, and she's like, "I was a shitty friend." Um, she she calls herself a cunt wipe, <laughs> which like, yeah, it was. <laughs> yeah, you fucked your best friend's boyfriend. Like, I mean, that really sucks, dude. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like I wouldn't say it, but like, yeah, <laughs> you said it. I'm <laughs> not gonna disagree. Yeah, sorry, <laughs> you're not wrong. Um, <laughs> so she like she owns up to her mistake, which like initially I'm like, oh yeah, that's that's great, good job. That's like that's working towards building a better relationship. And Lucy is salty to begin with, understandably so. I can understand. Um, and then Margot explains more about why she had sex with Brett to begin with. And she specifically cites that he could make her wet and make her orgasm for real. <laughs> Which to that I say, Margot, dick is abundant. Like, <laughs> as if men aren't a dime a dozen. <laughs> like literally, like listen, if if you just like really need dick, you can get it from other places. Put I that promise. on a shirt. <laughs> Like, oh it's good. Dick is abundant. Dick is abundant. <laughs> fine. There's not a, no no shortage. No shortage. I Coronavirus did not affect that. Oh, <laughs> oh my god. Um. <laughs> so I also wrote here in my notes. Brett has a beautiful dick. Sounds fake. Um. <laughs> <laughs> I've never heard a dick described as beautiful. Yeah, I can't no. imagine that I will ever do that at Ooh. any point. <laughs> there, it's it's fake. not real. Weird, crooked, yeah, hairy. <laughs> vain. Which is why women are annoyed by dick pics. Guys, yes. please take note. Literally, do not send dick pics. Exactly. You send those. We're like, we know, we know where those are supposed to go. We know we what know. they do. That's fine. We don't want to see them. I'm All familiar. Right. <laughs> I'm aware it exists. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> uh, so from here, 
we get a, a, a weird, we cut to a shot of like somebody moving through the house. Oh no, who could it be? Is it the killer? No, turns out it's Brett. He's here because he needs to be apparently. And Margot and Lucy are both like, why are you here? Oh my God. And he surprises them by letting them know that the reason that he was calling Lucy all night was because he wanted to break up with her and he's in love with Margot. Ooh. Plot twist. He not, just drops that on us. Not only did the plot twist of uh, let him wanting to get together with Margot come up, but the plot twist of weren't they already fucking broken up? So yeah, what, yeah. Or was so it like a break? Like they're like, on like, like a break they were situation in the car earlier. Like, yeah, I don't understand. I was so in there. I understand. I get it. And he was like, I, I don't want to get back together. I was like, we established this quite a while ago. <laughs> we didn't think either of you wanted to. Like, why what? is this happening? <laughs> why, why is this news? This? <laughs> so everybody's a little caught off guard by the fact that he's in love with Margot. He talks at length about how the quiet ones will let you do anything. That was really gross. I really hated that section. That was because so it, nasty. It was so uncomfortable. Yeah, that grossed and it was me very, out so bad. It was bad. Um, and Margot responds. <laughs> Once again, you can tell that this was written by mostly men. Um, Margot responds by saying, I'm mostly flattered. But then she like is, but then she's like, oh no, like you're my best friend. Like, fuck you. Oh my God. Which... Mm, <laughs> Is that what you would say in that situation? Yeah, no. I'm mostly flattered you could think by the it. fact that you want to have sex with me. You could think no. it, definitely. In front of my best friend who you, you fucked have over. To say it out loud. Like, how about we don't? Yeah. Um, <laughs> so uh, they both tell him to fuck off. After that, uh, Beth and Lucy are hugging because they're best friends and they told him to fuck off and whatever. Brett's still in the room and he's making eyes at Margot and Margot still says that she's going to fuck him and he's going to let, she's going to let him fuck her in the ass. I'm and sorry, she that before he leaves. That dirty bitch. I'm like, sorry, Lucy. she's dirty hugging bitch. Lucy. I gotta do it. Whore! <laughs> okay. It's so bad. I didn't want to blow out the mic. <laughs> it was very disappointing. It was. I was like doing air punches to the screen when she started doing that. I was so mad. Because, like, like, you you think that these girls, like, you know, they're taking, you know, she's taking accountability and ownership and they're uplifting each other and they're forgiving each other. And then, like, you have to make the women tear each other down again. Let them have one sincere fucking moment. Victory. And, like, one. One. It just proves what a disingenuine person she is. She sucks. She fucking sucks. And, like, that makes me really sad because the moments where they are like reminiscing about their friendship, like them in the car together at the beginning of the movie, them Mm -hmm. looking at their pictures, like uh, over their phones together, singing together in the hallway dramatically. Like that's not the kind of friendship where you would do that. Completely (laughs) undercut. I didn't appreciate that writing. (laughs) Yeah, Yeah, it was just completely (laughs) undercut in that one moment. Yeah. And for what? Fuck, I can't wait for this bitch to (laughs) die. I was ready. (laughs) For what? I was like, you're dying, I'm done. (laughs) So uh, Lucy and Margot are good. They're like, all right, we're good. Fuck Brett. Let's go back to the party. And they're like, okay, we're going to go clean ourselves up. We've been crying and like a little emotional. They go to the bathroom. Oh shit. Beth is dead in the tub. (laughs) (laughs) So this begins like a little sequence of them freaking out and realizing that, okay, first Beth is dead in the tub. They go downstairs. Oh shit everyone's dead in the (laughs) living room um they try to like escape out a window the killer's there with the knife oh my god super scary they're like okay well let's just get out of the house they run outside the killer's outside oh my god what the fuck it was very like the strangers yes i I like i like the lingering shot of like old bag face just like Mm -hmm. Just sit hanging there. out like, get to see, in the driveway. Like a good like, shot hey. of the mask, too. Right? It was like, great. Oh, yeah. is, what are you guys doing? This is where we finally get to see it. You're not going anywhere. <laughs> what, you got plans or something? 
(laughs) (laughs) Um, They go back inside. They're trying to hide and get away from the killer. And they run into this room. I'm not entirely sure what this room that they run into is. It was, it looked like a bedroom, but we never see like a shot of the, like the other side of the room. So it was unclear to me if it was like a bathroom or a bedroom or a closet (laughs) question mark a room with a door we're not sure i have no idea what that was (laughs) um but the girls hold themselves up in the in the room they shut the door and the killer's trying to get in Margot has a beautiful epiphany oh my gosh there's my pencil bag right there conveniently i will stab him with pencils in the arm and this is when being a pencil bitch comes in clutch (laughs) <laughs> because you always have things to stab people with. <laughs> I will never, ever be sad about keeping lots of pens and pencils in my bag because I am prepared. <laughs> oh my God. It was beautiful. There's even one that she holds up where like the point is not even there. It's a completely blunt pencil and she still stabs him in the arm with beautiful. it. Beautiful. Like, yes. <laughs> pencil bitch to the rescue again. I love it. <laughs> we I'm love a stationary ass any, Like, I'm really sad she didn't make any like... um puns or just awful just groaning puns while she did that <laughs> like uh, something about a number two or, or <laughs> I, I don't know just something this was like the- like hold up a gel pen and be like sorry i don't think we gel well together and then just stab him <laughs> this is what you get for missing the point yes <laughs> something like- <laughs> i don't know this scene made me frustrated, like in a classic horror movie sense where I'm sitting here going, that's the idea you came up with. His <laughs> arm is actively wrapped around this door. So his arm is between the door frame and the door. You can't just kick the door really hard and break his arm. Literally. No, you pick the pencils. Yeah, this movie's not very <laughs> logical. I don't know if you noticed that. <laughs> throw your like weight against that door girl like you're going back in the house sort of moment where the second they start running upstairs i was like no there's a back door what the <laughs> fuck are you doing there's a whole neighborhood there's a million pizza cars jump in one but also <laughs> like th- when they ran outside there is two of them we see one killer like they could have just gone in completely different directions and gotten the fuck out of dodge like yeah I com- I agree. You Hello? know what? Throw throw Margo in front of him. I yeah, Lucy can just trip Margo. <laughs> yeah, throw Margo and then just Lucy get the is fuck our out sweet of baby there. angel. <laughs> <laughs> um. So they stab the killer. Uh. My next note is: Oh no, Lucy's phone is dead. Margo's phone is in the kitchen, and they don't have a way to contact anybody. Whatever shall we do? Um. So. They decide to hide in a closet. Classic. <laughs> With their okay. mouths Where else covered. would you go? Because <laughs> again, yeah. the, the Halloween reference here when mm-hmm. Lori yep. hid in the closet, they got to do it too. Mm-hmm. Yep. And actually, I have to correct myself. I got the timing a little bit goofy. So they actually go into the room first. The pencil stabbing takes place. Then they try and get out the window. Then they go outside. Then they come back in and they get in the closet. And that is where my section of our beloved movie ends. <laughs> okay, yeah. so this brings us to the sixth and final part of the movie. Um, okay, so we know that the girls are in the closet, like like you said, Halloween style. Their mouths covered, them shaking, looking around. You know, you can see the scene. Um we see like the killer I think we like see him like walk in the front door and like this cool music is playing and it's like very like 80s like synth type uh oh like you know kind of reminiscent of like old slasher movies I guess and now we are in the midst of a game this game of cat and mouse um like we said the girls are in the hall closet doing the covering their mouths thing really scared shaking Halloween style um and so it, I think that the audience is led to believe that the killer is getting closer and closer and uh-oh, what's going to happen? And then lo and behold, good guy, Pat, I think his name is Pat, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Pat, yeah. good guy, nerdy guy. He jumps in and he saves the day and he's like, leave the girls alone. Um, 
And so then the killer and like good guy Pat end up in this like scuffle, um, kind of one-sided because the killer ends up like beating him up like really brutally. They make a interesting uh, stylistic choice with like um, <laughs> like him getting beat up. I don't I don't know. I remember like being like okay, the, right? Like was it like weird? I loved like with the it. I laughed. I thought like, it was hilarious. I loved it so much. Yeah. What it you could tell that it was each shot was sped up at a certain point because yes. He, they didn't want to actually slam him yeah, into they keep a the counter. The idea is that he's <laughs> slamming his head into different areas of the kitchen. Yes. But you can tell that when they actually filmed it, they were doing it really slowly so that yeah. it wouldn't hurt the actor. So he didn't actually get fucking mauled. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and they, it, oh, it was beautiful. And they kept reusing <laughs> the, the same, same shots. shots. The same over sequence and over shots and over. over and over. Every and time. I was dying. <laughs> I loved it. It was nice. I told um, Trevor that 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 part specifically felt like one of the movies that like they would make. Like that yes. felt very yes. like it was yes. very butcher the baker genre. Yes, butcher the bakers. Yes. Butcher yes. bakers. Butcher yes. bakers. Fun. Esque, butcher for sure. Bakers. <sighs> I miss butcher the bakers. Oh, me too. Okay, let's do a butcher commentary soon. Um, okay, so this guy is getting like mauled by the killer um getting his head slammed into countertops and against windows and all that stuff and so then some like graphic and i wanted to know your lady's opinion on this um you know he gouges his eye out and how did how does the killer gouge his eye out was it like a knife was it just a knife i think it was was a spoon i think a spoon like he like scooped it Mm -hmm. i think it was a a spoon so he got he gouges good guy Pat's eye out. He's stabbing him violently, and then he ends up pouring like boiling water from the tea kettle all over him. <sighs> Did you talk um, about that? Because that the tea kettle, the setup for that, because oh, it was like <laughs> such a small little part, but I couldn't help but laugh about it. Where he like just casually like starts like he like gets the tea kettle ready as if they're yeah. about to just like yeah. sit down for like but a casual like that, sip Pat's of tea like okay we can talk this out we'll sit and have some tea <laughs> and we'll figure out a good way to get out of all of this together what kind of tea are you into yeah <laughs> yes. oh my god i was like okay this isn't gonna lead to nowhere he's using that water for something <laughs> <laughs> yeah, which ends so up um, all over her head and face and body. Um, you know, the eye effects weren't, I, I know we have like a, a special effects guru here, um, Cassandra. I want to know your thoughts on the special effects of I liked this it. scene. I, it wasn't bad. Yeah, I mean, I felt like they lingered on it, obviously. And mm-hmm. anytime you linger on a shot like that, it, it looks less and less real with each scene. Mm-hmm. But it was fun and it was gross and icky and I, everything, anything with an eye. Uh, what was it? That movie Hostel where they pop the eye out and they're like mm. burning it or something. Oh. Like that is one of the creepiest <laughs> effects I've ever seen. It grosses me out to my inner core. And I just, anything with an eyeball, it's, it's disgusting. You don't want people touching your fucking eyes. No. Like, mm-hmm. Or scooping no, them it was, out. It was great. No. They did yeah. a great job. Um, So yes, lots of good, gory, bloody effects in this scene. And then, um, ooh, did not like this. Um, The killer ends up, like, Mm -hmm. taking scissors and, like, he's going in to, like, um, Pat's crotch. And so, um, you know, Mm -hmm. Pat ends up saying, don't cut my penis off, don't cut my penis off, which I don't know about you ladies, but that's something I hear Nick say all the time (laughs) um, to me personally. Um, so he, he ends up he ends up cutting the penis off with scissors. Um, and then I think that's all we see for that. Because then we hear like a knock on the door, like a doorbell or something. It ends up being, you know, the dirty old cop from the beginning. Um, the I'm cop- sorry. I'm sorry. Dirty old cop? <laughs> I guess uh, I think we beef beef cake. Cake. Sorry. Uh, officer, <laughs> officer beefcake. Sorry, Officer Beefcake. Okay, this I stand is corrected. Girls night. Okay, <laughs> that cop girl was night. like really sexy. He was a beefcake. <laughs> he was a beefcake. <laughs> officer Beefcake shows up and he sees the killer at the door and he's like, "Oh, I guess you beat me to it." Because he sees like the killer's like all bloody with like a knife or whatever. He's like making a joke. Oh, I guess you beat me to it. Like, 
alluding to like damn i was gonna come in and rape and torture and kill all those girls you beat me to it killer and the cop have like a convert whole conversation you know a bonding session together um i think then we flash and let me know if i'm missing something but then i think we flash back to the kitchen lucy and margo by this point in time have like fled from the closet they find pat laying bloody um all maimed and mutilated on the kitchen floor he's still alive though because she makes some sort of joke about his uncircumcised penis because the killer has put his you know cut off his penis and put his uncircumcised penis in his mouth which very Um, much looks like um an italian sausage it's definitely 100 some sort of italian sausage (laughs) or brat or whatever because they pull it out put it on the floor it's definitely that thing is dark it does not match pat it is (laughs) yeah (laughs) That is not Would his not color, match. honey. <laughs> yeah, no, not not right. Um, so, <laughs> something's off. <laughs> not correct. Sorry. Not correct. Nope. Wrong. Um, it's wrong. <laughs> so then there's this like funny moment where like the girls um, like ethically friend zone him. I-, I can't remember what the line is, but they're like, oh, you know, like Pat, like you're just like such a good guy. I think he thinks that this is like his moment. Um, you know, he was the hero, but he ends up getting epically friend zoned as a friend. He- yeah, I was about to oh. say he's like, I just want you to know, Lucy, I love you. And Lucy's like. Yeah, I love you too as a friend. And I'm like, here's this guy fucking dying, <laughs> trying to save her ass. Can't <laughs> catch a break. This guy ain't got no dick deathbed. anymore. Mm-mm. Like, you can't even just like let him have that W in that moment. <laughs> like, right. Absolutely dude, not. He is not going to have that long left. Just let him think it, please. Literally. Just let him think it. Who does this hurt? <laughs> be like, I need to save my ass, but I love you too. I always have. Okay, bye. <laughs> bye. You. Just give him that. He stops being good guy, Pat. And he's like, instead of just being like, ah, it's okay, I understand. Instead of like, bitch. Yes. <gasps> oh my God, I was waiting for that. I was waiting for him to be like, you fucking tease. Like, stop it. He was still like, take it like a champ. He was still like, okay, uh, like I understand. Yeah. yeah he's yeah, like, a good exactly. guy to the end. Yeah. A good guy to the end. Damn it. Um, Does not make for good comedy. <laughs> so then I think the girls run to like, not the, I guess the basement, you know, like on a raised ranch, like you walk in, you can either go up or go down to like the room on like the lower levels. Like, I think they run kind of like to the lower, lower level basement room. And this is where the, I guess, whole twist is revealed to the audience. It turns out that this whole time there were two, count them, two killers. And they're both standing there, bag head and costume and all. Um, And now it's revealed. I don't know. I think that they take off their own bags or masks, I think. Mm -hmm. But it's revealed that the whole time. The killers were the neighbors, Goober and Gums, um, from the very beginning. And so they're like shocked or whatever. Um, and I think maybe like one of the girls is like, you know, why, why did you do this? And the 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 late what's what are what are their names? The Kingsley? Kingsley? The Kingsleys. Kingsleys. Mrs. Kingsley, Kingsley, the neighbor lady from the beginning. She's like, you know, we just want to teach you guys a lesson. Um, You know, you can't be too loud because that was like her whole spiel, like from the beginning, like you're too loud. Don't party, whatever. Allergic to noise. I'm I'm allergic to noise. (laughs) You can't drift Um, off into dreamland. (laughs) (laughs) And so then there's a little scuffle between Mr. and Mrs. Kingsley because then like Mr. Kingsley, like the, the neighbor dad guy or the husband is like, yeah, actually it was because to teach you slutty little sluts a lesson because, you know, you're walking around in your little slutty clothes and like, he's just like being creepy about it. Mm -hmm. And then the, that sets off like a red flag in like his wife's and Mrs. Kingsley's mind. She's like, Whoa, wait, why are you being weird and creepy with it? This was literally just because we wanted to teach them a lesson about like loudness and not partying, (laughs) not because of the stuff that they're wearing. Like that's weird. And they start to go off in this like funny little, you know, married, old married couples, a lover's spat, (laughs) you know, this is going to make for a weird therapy session on Monday. And like, (laughs) 
(laughs) (laughs) all that kind of stuff. And then it kind of turns into like their own little uh, therapy session about, you know, going on and on about this loveless marriage that they have, whatever. Um, So I didn't see that twist coming necessarily. Um, I feel like it was fitting. Um, did you guys like see that coming at all? Or was there any point in the movie where you're like, oh wait, because there was one point where I was like, oh wait, the neighbors, remember the neighbors? And then they kind of like, I was like, okay, whatever. And then they like disappeared from my mind, but I don't know. What do you think? I, I think it was done well enough. Like, I don't want to say subtly because this movie, oh my God, this movie is (laughs) subtlety is not in its nature at all, Mm -hmm. but they did distract me enough with other things going on in the film for me to not really think about the neighbors too much. They were in and then they were out and then so much weird shit happens to distract me. It wasn't even on my radar. Yeah, like that by the time they're revealed I'm like, oh oh, shit. I think that it helped it. I think that it helped it that that they kind of kept it as representing that it was just one killer kind of throughout the movie and then to have it come out where I guess it does make sense that how they played it out could yeah. have been. I honestly I didn't too. foresee us getting to know who the killer was. And maybe it's because this movie was so fucking wacky and just so, <laughs> like you said, so much going on that I, I felt like we were never going to know who this was. Like, it's just one of those mm. mysterious I things. Been pissed. <laughs> well, I would have been as uh, pissed off as Beth if that had happened. <laughs> <laughs> I would have been yelling help. at myself in the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> they should have told <laughs> us. <laughs> well, even how Beefcake Cop at one point was just like, so if I came back and like were to tie you guys yeah. up, hog tie, yeah. like, you yeah. know, they tried to make you think that it was him. Like, or it's yeah. the creepy or the boyfriend. boyfriend. Yeah. And well, then he does show up it. when he does. Sh- the boyfriend does show up again. I was like, uh, OK, has he been here the whole time and just now taken off all of his like murderer garb to. Mm-hmm say hey to the girls or what's going on they a lot of red herrings in this one oh. i was very happy to see that <laughs> yes so, from the beginning i thought pat was going to be the murderer because he was the good oh. guy mm-hmm. and then when i saw oh. eva get killed behind him i thought he purposely didn't pay attention and like another good guy was like a second and <laughs> it's an army of pat, good I, guys. Before, I had no idea I didn't even think of that. Maddie, you bringing up that scene with Eva in like the window and Pat at the front. I had to call it out. I was very excited that they used uh, they used split diopter in a number of shots <laughs> in this movie. I was so thrilled. <laughs> that is like the one term that I know. <laughs> I'm like, oh my god, they used it in this movie. This is amazing. Split exactly. diopter. I have no idea what you're talking about. Giving you a standing ovation right now. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Trevor was very proud of me. <laughs> Uh, but no, like split diopter is, um, two points are in focus, um, in the same shot. So like Pat was in focus, but also Eva was very in focus. And there's like this weird, like middle line that's kind of hazy. And that's like the split diopter. I I feel like so educated when I talk about it. The one thing that I understand. (laughs) (laughs) Um, so there's this big twist it's revealed to the audience um and so the girls end up you can feel free to help me find this missing link here but like the girls end up like stabbing mr kingsley in the throat with a screwdriver Mm -hmm. now is it just because they had had enough of his like perviness is that they just saw an opportunity Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think yeah. it's because they murdered all their friends. Okay, like, so like, right. how dare you yeah. mess with us? Like, mm-hmm. it's Russell screwdriver time. Gonna well, die. So. Yeah, and they were about to kill them anyway, because like yeah. there was no room in Mrs. Kingsley's mind, regardless of, of what Mr. Kingsley was saying. So they yeah. were just like, mm-hmm. all right, I think Lucy is. saw that okay. he was distracted arguing with his wife, and she's like, oh shit, there's a screwdriver there. <laughs> stab, stab. <laughs> she saw an opportunity. <laughs> the slashing, um, if you will. <laughs> So she then, said the thing. <laughs> Sorry, I gotta go. <laughs> so 
So then I guess they stab him in the throat with the screwdriver. And then like the wife is like, no, wait, hell no. So then like she goes after them. And then there's like a scuffle between, I think it's just Lucy and Margo and Mrs. Kingsley, the neighbor lady, right? <laughs> so they're going after each other. And then I think they they end up, the girls end up stabbing Mrs. Kingsley <laughs> and they like end up cutting out her intestine and then choking her with it it's the um, most absurd it, it is ridiculous. really absurd and i want to know your thoughts on that because like to me i don't know i've mixed feelings about the gore thing like the gore i feel like wasn't like super necessary for the movie like a part of it and maybe it's just me feel free to challenge me on this um but i just felt like misplaced like i feel like they didn't have to resort to like the whole intestine thing yeah. to like get it i don't i don't know i don't know i agree i totally agree uh, okay. just this last wonky now i loved i loved the the blood effects and things like that throughout the movie but this particular one i was just like yeah this is way over the top this is like your one last you know, woohoo, let's get this one out because it's so weird and over the yeah. top and why not? And yeah, it, that one was just, I was like, man. Maybe it just felt like it seemed like like out of character for the, like it just didn't seem like something the girls would like yeah. realistically yeah. do. But I guess yes. that when you're watching this, you have to like throw the realism and like logic out the window. I, I think, <laughs> I think I it, it seems misplaced because they, they totally stole the idea of pulling intestines out from Butcher the Baker's. That's what I was oh, going to say. <laughs> Maybe it feels out of place because it doesn't belong in that movie, but belongs in Butcher the Baker's. That smells like an intellectual property suit. Hmm. That's there you go. I, I wouldn't pursue that. This movie was made two years before a horse. They it? stole it. They, they stole it. We, they shut up. <laughs> <laughs> They're time travelers, obviously. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> But in regard to gore, I just feel like sometimes it's like the less you see, the better, you know? So I don't know if the intestine thing was like super necessary. I don't think it looked bad. Um, I'm not the effects expert, but like it was fine. Um, And so like they, I guess they end up cutting up Mrs. Kingsley with the saw. Does that sound mm-hmm. familiar? Yeah, I'm looking through it right now. I was now. real yeah. sleepy when I was taking these notes. Um, <laughs> and That's then the do it, it kind of ends with them just like, like they've killed Mr. and Mrs. Kingsley, whatever. And then the girls kind of just sink down. I don't know if they're in the bathtub or if they're just on the bathroom floor. And they're kind of just sitting there in silence, like kind of reflecting on what just happened, um, kind of in shock. Yet, you know, they exchange a few words. It's like, oh, okay, their friendship has sustained despite, you know, one of them completely betraying the other and all this other shit that has hit the fan. You know, they're still friends and they forgive each other or whatever. Um, and then the movie ends um, with Margot receiving a dick pic, a very real dick pic um, <laughs> from Brent, um, to which Lucy says, you bitch, and then stabs Margot. It cuts immediately. Uh, the movie abruptly ends. It goes to the credits um, with a like fun type rock song playing. And I was um, so happy. I was so happy that <laughs> that's how that bitch went out. Yeah, <laughs> it was definitely some poetic justice um and i really liked how the pizza guys had their own section in the credits of course. Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um and that i think that that wraps wraps everything up that wasn't was there beautiful. an after credit scene was there an after credit was scene there? if there was i i turned it off too quickly Same. <laughs> yeah i didn't see it either was there one Okay, oh, I no. just I'm, I'm I'm gonna scan through see if there was. I Uh-oh. don't remember there being one. I totally um what they marveled the us. Are you serious? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe oh I'm God. crazy. I can't remember. The slashing cinematic like, universe. I was literally about to say that. <laughs> Same. I was not prepared for the slashing cinematic universe. <laughs> oh my god. Okay, come on. With the time this? traveling, they have to address that. There is. <laughs> Yeah, okay. I thought I was what? crazy for a second. What is it? Yeah. I don't have the audio because I'm I gotta keep it quiet for this, but Pat's on the floor and he's saying something. I don't remember what I Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. What was he talking so, about? Okay, thank so you. So Pat's on the floor. <laughs> 
so pats on the floor. Ryan's the one who was like, hey, there's an after credit scene because, you know, he is, you know, a little obsessive about this podcast and wanted to make sure he wrote my notes for me. So he's like, make sure you watch that after credit scene. And so we're sitting there and Pat's on the floor and he's uh, he's like, oh, I'm not dead. I'm not dead yet. Uh, and, you know, he's just basically it's his last death cry, his death rattle. And he's just waiting for somebody to come check on him. And there's nobody around. Uh, Lucy doesn't come back for his ass. And, and that's it. That's, that's so beautiful. sad. That, that's, that's beautiful. <laughs> With his dick cut oh off. God. Yeah. Wait. Laying next to his head. I have a conspiracy theory. Ooh, I just put together it. this in my head. Do you think that the uncircumcised penis that Ashley was referencing earlier in the movie was Pat's? Oh, oh I bet. shit. Because they made a point of telling us that he's uncircumcised. <laughs> oh no, that, oh means, that means that Pat's the punchline to a horror story. Pat's dick I, is the punchline I really to hope, the girl's horror story. I really hope that's not the case because that's fucked up. Pat was a nice guy. It's a possibility. What? <laughs> is anyone else getting the message from Tyler that I just got? Oh no. I have my notifications turned on. <gasps> oh no. What is that? No. Oh, <laughs> there is a slashing too. No. The no. final beginning. Oh, what's the final guys. eye patch? I think I left my oven on. <laughs> Sorry. I, uh, I got to go. go. You left your <laughs> oven on. <laughs> Are you going to go put your head inside of it so that you don't have to watch the slashing yeah. too? I'm Not feeling slashing. very a Sylvia Plath tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, oh, dang. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> so do we have to like rate, rate yes. the movie? Yes. So yeah. that is the slashing. So uh, Lisa, on a scale from malevolent to benevolent, what do you think? You know, it t- it took me two viewings. Well, one one and a half, one one and one fifth viewing um, <laughs> to to really get a sense of what the movie is and and how you're supposed to really watch it. I say that it is. Mm, I'm gonna lean towards benevolence. I think it is a fun watch if you don't try to take it seriously because it doesn't try to take itself seriously. (laughs) I caught myself doing the same thing, like playing into the characters and their emotions and things happening around Mm -hmm. them. And I was like, no, this is a comedy. It's supposed to be funny. This isn't supposed to be a straight slasher. Even the name is like a parody. The (laughs) slashing. Yeah. Benevolent. Um... Let's go with, uh, I don't even know how to reference you. The not cozy old Sarah. Sarah <laughs> Walsh. Sarah. <laughs> when I was thinking about it, I kind of said, because Sean said, you're going to have to rate this either benevolent or malevolent. And I'm like, well, can I do benevolent? Because <laughs> it is not as bad as some of the dog shit that I know that they've had to watch <laughs> or that I've fallen asleep to listening Um, it wasn't the greatest thing I've ever watched by any means, but it was enjoyable because it was, they were finding their own humor. Mm. So I lean more towards the benevolent side. Does that make sense? Dig it. Anna Claire. (laughs) So I, I'm of the same mind as you guys. I think this is definitely in benevolent territory. There are certain aspects of this movie that are malevolent in nature, (laughs) Um, but I also, I got a very like warm, fuzzy feeling from watching this because I felt like you could tell these people really enjoyed being around each other. Mm-hmm. Like, regardless of like, if the movie was good or not, you can tell they had a lot of fun making it. Yeah. Um, and like having the frame of reference of like not having been around you guys while movies were being made previously, like Butcher the Bakers, um, I love those movies because I know that you guys have had a really good time making them. Um, And I just imagine like that same microcosm exists for this movie. Like, it's just like the same thing somewhere else in a different part of the world. And I really appreciate that. Um, (laughs) There are some things that didn't land, but there was a lot that did land and I enjoyed watching it. So benevolent. (laughs) (laughs) 
uh, sorry. <laughs> Hi. Um, <laughs> uh, let's go Maddie next. <laughs> um, so Zach also was like, Hey, at the end of this, you're going to have to give it a rating. And I looked at him and I said, malevolent immediately, because I am not a fan of the horror genre. I looked away as soon as Pat was on the floor with his eye, because I not gonna lie, I thought I was gonna throw up. I Ugh. don't do effects at all. I can't even watch our own movies and I know how they're made. <laughs> like <laughs> we hit a certain point where I'm like, ah, oh, Sean's gonna swing an intestine, I'm gonna leave. <laughs> <laughs> like a lasso, mind you. Yeah, no. Nope. <laughs> Any sort of gore whatsoever, I can't watch somebody get a shot. Can't do it. Um, just just immediately. But so my gut reaction was malevolent. But discussing it with everyone, I realized I actually enjoyed it a lot more than I thought. And I just have those initial reactions as a person because my stomach does flip flops. Um, (laughs) But I don't know, recapping everything and reading through all of the the goofy notes and stuff we've made, I I think I'm leaning more towards benevolent. Um, So if you, for those of you listening, if you don't like horror movies, find a group of friends who do and you'll like them a little bit more. You still won't want to watch it by yourself. <laughs> so uh, that goes with the, the second Sarah. First yes. Sarah. The other Sarah. No, yes, that, there's other no Sarah second Sarah, Sarah here. <laughs> um, so yeah, I want to echo everything that you guys just said. Um, I'm glad that I'm just not crazy. Cause I was like, should I hate this more than I do? Um, I got a lot of good laughs, like genuine laughs, which I was not expecting. Just like you guys said, compared to the other dog shit that they watch on, <laughs> on a regular, very regular basis. I feel like we did luck out uh, with this one. I mean, I feel like the acting was pretty good. I liked the camera work. Um, and, you know, just good jokes. I Like Anna Claire said, I think that some of it was like malevolent in nature when it comes to like <laughs> maybe relying a little bit too much on like the boobs and butts and vag jokes. But like yeah. they all knew that like it was in good fun. I don't think it was necessarily like super like degrading in the way that like other movies that they watch are. Um And so I thought that it was like genuinely funny, which is not something that I was expecting. So um, like Lisa was saying it it, like for what it is, for what it's trying to be. um, And also it did remind me a lot of butcher um, in (laughs) many ways, which I, you know, have a soft soft spot for. So I'm going to lean towards, uh, you know, malevolent. If there was like a dial kind of like going in between malevolent and benevolent, it's going to lean a little bit towards the benevolent side. And I think that that's, that that's fine. Cassandra? Yes. Um, so I'm in the same boat with you guys. I, I thought it was great. Um, benevolent for me, uh, only because I found myself laughing out loud uh, at many of the, the jokes and the weirdness and fucking Beth. Uh, she was my favorite character. Uh, of course, Ryan's favorite character was Ashley because he likes to improv, but I really think it was just because she was a slutty little lady. <laughs> Ryan, Ryan has a weird, weird, like, reputation on this show for liking the weird and overt women. That dirty here. talk sequence must have really got to him. God. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. yeah that was yeah, his favorite really? part. You're going to do that? Yeah, it sounds, yeah. Uh, that sounds yeah. really good. Her, her whole, yeah. he, qu- he said, improv. And I was like, yep, yeah, mm-hmm, oh. sure it was. Oh, my God. <laughs> He's in trouble. Oh, you see how she was moving her hand? Yeah, you know what she was trying to do. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, I liked it, guys. It's benevolent for me for sure. Wow. Good uh, good drinking movie, possibly. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Oh my gosh. We should put together, we should do another ladies' night at some point and do the slashing too. But we need to create a drinking game. Based a drinking on, game. On yes. What we expect to see in the slashing too, and every time every we see time one of there's those an things, artsy bloodshot. Every time there's a what's that shot called, Anna Claire? A split diopter. Every time there there's yes. one of those Thank drink. Thank you. <laughs> every time they say the word badge. <laughs> we need like a bingo board for the yes. slashing too. I like that too. Yes. You ladies are fabulous. I've had a lot of fun. <laughs> Me too. Are there any like final, final words we're supposed to say? <laughs> she hasn't said Eva yet. Stop. <laughs> He's hey making man, up for it lost wasn't time. just me. 
Just go you, ever, you ever, 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 ever. <laughs> <laughs> Forever, ever? Forever, ever? <laughs> Forever. <laughs> Is this the beginning of the opposite of the, the guy's show? Benevolent boobies. Oh boy. Benevolent, Benevolent boobies. boobies. <laughs> <laughs> Watch out. It's so funny to me. <laughs> <laughs>